गुड इवनिंग मेरे प्यारे बच्चों डियर लविंग स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दोनों हाथ जोड़ के क्षमा प्रार्थना सॉरी ड्यू टू सम टेक्निकल ग्लिच वी कुड नॉट स्टार्ट इट एट सिक्स राइट नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम सो टूडेज पर्पज इज वी हैव टू स्कोर मैक्सिमम मार्क्स ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एग्जाम receiving lot of messages lot of queries regarding that nmc uh, statistics uh, which was released yesterday i'm not able to understand why some things happened not at the appropriate time so we have nothing to do with all that our sole purpose is that we have to clear this exam right on 20th january 2023 today we will discuss 25 important clinical questions of ops kaini as well as how can we score maximum marks on 20th january 23 let's begin our journey with question number 1 of ops kaini let's start here is our clinical question number 1 first of all if we get this kind of question we should try to read last two lines first and have a look at options so that we will get a idea what examiner want to ask lot of students are asking the questions sir exam has been postponed so will it be tough this time How how can we anticipate things? You know, हम अपने आप से सोचना बहुत कुछ शुरू कर देते हैं यार ये वाला पेपर ना थोड़ा सा टफ आएगा ये वाला पेपर हो सकता है टफ आ जाए अगस्त ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में भी टफ आया था कि लास्ट टाइम का पेपर क्या बहुत ईजी था वहां लास्ट एफ एम जी एग्जाम ईजी नो पेपर वन वॉज लिटल ट्रिकी सेम फे यू कांट एंटिसिपेट एनी थिंग द क्वेश्चन पेपर में भी वेरी ईजी इट मे बी मॉडरेट इट मे बी लिटिल टफ हाउ सो एवर द क्वेश्चन पेपर ए whatever it is if we get this kind of a 2 km or a 3 km long question we will read the last two lines first let's read the lines what examiner want to say that with normal myometrial eco pattern both ovaries are normally visualized no tubo ovarian mass examiner is saying ovaries are normal no tubo ovarian mass uterus is normal which of the following is most likely i understanding so it can't be any organic pelvic pathology because uterus is normal ovary is normal no tubo ovarian mass so it is not a organic pelvic pathology let's have a look at option premenstrual syndrome oh in premenstrual syndrome there is no organic pelvic pathology mitral smudge there is no organic pelvic pathology cryptomenorrhea yes cryptomenorrhea is organic pelvic pathology what is the most common cause of cryptomenorrhea imperforate hymen is spasmodic dysmenorrhea no organic pelvic pathology so we are trapped among three choices let's begin the journey a 19 year old girl we know that we have to read every word in the question and we have to read all the options till last one the age of the girl is 19 year she is a 19 year old girl presents in gynecology opd with history of cyclical cramping abdominal pain with bleeding she is having pain with bleeding every month means this pain is right at the time of menstruation we have discussed in our class here there can be cyclical pain without bleeding there can be cyclical pain with bleeding cyclical pain without bleeding is please answer i am asking you cyclical pain without bleeding cyclical pain without bleeding chocolate question whosoever answer it correct will get the chocolate cyclical pain without bleeding what is the answer let's have a rapid fire yaar let's be interactive cyclical pain without bleeding what is the answer if this question in this question if this is written there is a cyclical pain without bleeding what is the answer tell me wow cyclical pain without bleeding what should be the answer wonderful hadi ahmed c cryptomenorrhea wonderful cyclical pain without bleeding answer is cryptomenorrhea and what is the most common cause of cryptomenorrhea most common cause of cryptomenorrhea is imperforate hymen very important potential mcq for our exam cyclical pain we are diverting from our basic question cyclical pain without bleeding what is most likely cryptomenorrhea question number 2 what is most common cause of cryptomenorrhea 
imperforate hymen. In today's session, we will be discussing all the potential MCQs, including these 25 clinical questions, including various related single liners. What is the treatment for imperforate hymen? Treatment for imperforate hymen. Again, a chocolate question. Many chocolates, don't worry. I have track of Cadbury, complete track of Cadbury. What is the treatment for? What is the treatment for imperforate hymen? Come on, everyone. Treatment for imperforate hymen, 20th January 23, potential OBG MCQ, cruciate incision. What is the answer? Cruciate incision. Wonderful. Shivani Mohanty, cruciate incision. Wonderful. Piyush, wow, wonderful. Everyone, fine. So let's come back to our basic question. This question is cyclical cramping abdominal pain with bleeding. We diverted from our basic question to cyclical pain without bleeding. We solved that area. Now cyclical pain with bleeding every month. It starts at the onset of menses and is maximum in intensity on day 1. This pain is starting at the onset of menses and is maximum in intensity on day 1. You request to get done an ultrasound which revealed uterine size normal, normal myometrial eco pattern, both ovaries normally visualized, no tubo ovarian mass. See what examiner want to say that ultrasound report is suggestive of normal uterus, normal myometrial eco pattern, both ovaries are normally visualized, no tubo ovarian mass, which of the following is most likely. No organic pelvic pathology, first of all, pre menstrual syndrome. Can it be premenstrual syndrome? No. In premenstrual syndrome, there is anxiety, nervousness, palpitation approximately 5 to 10 days before menses. So this is gone. It is maximum on first day of menses. Premenstrual syndrome is gone. What is the drug of choice to treat premenstrual syndrome? 20th January 23 single liner question. Drug of choice to treat premenstrual syndrome is Fluoxetine. Fluoxetine. Where else did we discuss fluoxetine in Opskyne? Fluoxetine is the treatment for postpartum depression. Fluoxetine is treatment for postpartum depression. Fluoxetine is treatment for premenstrual syndrome. So premenstrual syndrome is gone because premenstrual syndrome occurs 5 to 10 days before menses. Gone. Middle smart. What is middle smart? Mittel smudge is pain at the time of ovulation. So mittel smudge is a mid-cycle pain. And in this question, this is cyclical pain, beta. This question is cyclical pain. Mittel smudge is mid-cycle pain. So mittel smudge is gone. What is the treatment for mittel smudge? What is the treatment for mittel smudge? Again, a chocolate question. What is the treatment for mittel smudge? Treatment for mittel smudge is reassurance. Middle smudge, mid cycle pain. Middle blue, mid cycle is spotting. In both middle smudge and middle blue, ultrasound report is normal. Treatment of both middle smudge and middle blue is reassurance. Cryptomenorrhea. Why it can't be cryptomenorrhea? In cryptomenorrhea, there is no bleeding. Cryptomenorrhea is cyclical pain without bleeding. We discussed beta. There are hundreds of MCQs in this single question. And all those MCQs are very important for our exam. We understand this. So we are solving, we are revising this very important area. What is spasmodic dysmenorrhea? Spasmodic dysmenorrhea is another name of primary dysmenorrhea. What is primary dysmenorrhea? Dysmenorrhea without organic pelvic pathology ultrasound report is normal. Why it is called spasmodic dysmenorrhea? Because it is due to spasm of myometrium and endometrium. Myometrial contractions and endometrial peristalsis due to excessive prostaglandin. This is why drug of choice to treat spasmodic dysmenorrhea or primary dysmenorrhea is mephenemic acid. What is the drug of choice to treat primary dysmenorrhea or spasmodic dysmenorrhea? It is mephanemic acid. Another very important MCQ beta, if spasmodic dysmenorrhea is not relieved by mephanemic acid, what is the next step? Oral combined pill. If there is no response with mephanemic acid, what is the next step? Oral combined pill. So answer to question number one is spasmodic dysmenorrhea. 
What is the answer to this question? Question number one, the answer is spasmodic dysmenorrhea. Spasmodic dysmenorrhea, fine. Chal. Let's have a quick look at these images. Sometimes these kind of image questions are asked. Tell me this is imperforate hymen. This is written. Imperforate hymen is answer to which question? Beta identify the image. This image question can be asked in our exam. Most common cause of cryptomenorrhea, imperforate hymen. This is image of, what is this image beta? This is the image of Asherman syndrome. What is Asherman syndrome? Fibrous bands or adhesions in endometrium. These are fibrous bands. They are present in endometrium. This is the case of Asherman syndrome. And if you do a hysteroscopy, this is the hysteroscopic appearance of Asherman syndrome. We can see all these fibrous bands or adhesions in endometrial cavity. So identify the image beta. This is hysteroscopic appearance of Asherman syndrome. And this is ultrasound appearance of Asherman syndrome. Tell me, this is hysterosalpingography beta. This is HSG image of Asherman syndrome. What can you see here? These are filling defects. You can see these areas are spared when we instill the radio opaque dye. This dye is not filling these areas. Why beta? Because there are adhesions, there are fibrous bands in these areas. This is why these areas are spared. So this is very important MCQ. Hysterosalpingography image, HSG image of Asherman syndrome. This is ultrasound image of Asherman syndrome. This is hysteroscopy image of Asherman syndrome. I am receiving many queries. Sir, I feel sleepy after few hours of study. When you feel sleepy, sir, when you sit down, you feel sleepy. We feel sleepy. Why we feel sleepy, yaar, you know? Because we feel boring. We movie two and a We continue watching two and two and a half hours movie, you know? Darsham 2, dekhlenge, Kantara, dekhlenge, Uchai. Dekhlenge. Tab aati. We don't feel sleepy because we get involved into that. Why we get involved into that? Because we enjoy that. When you feel sleepy at the time of a study, just, just remember why you started this journey. Where do you want to reach? What is our goal in life? What is our purpose in life? The moment you feel sleepy, immediately start thinking why you started this journey. Where do you want to reach? Nahi soenge beta, jab taise hi padla mein neend aegi na, humko dekhna hai, humhe kaha pahunchna hai. We want to reach on the top of medical field, on the top of medical fraternity, so we will not feel sleepy. Let's move to question number two. An adolescent girl was brought by her mother to the clinic. Adolescent girl was brought by the mother to the clinic with complaints of oligomenorrhea and hirsutism. So what are the complaints, beta? Oligomenorrhea and hirsutism. Ultrasound revealed multiple follicles in left ovary. Multiple follicles in left ovary ranging between 4 to 8 millimeter in size. And left ovarian volume is 18 cc. Oh my god. Right ovary is normally visualized on ultrasonogram. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? What comes to your mind, beta? She is an adolescent girl. Complaints are oligomenorrhea and hirsutism. Findings are present only in left ovary. Right ovary is normal. And what is the finding in left ovary? A small, a small follicle ranging between 4 to 8 millimeter in size. So what comes to your mind? Doesn't it look like polycystic ovarian syndrome? Yes, beta. Why does it look like polycystic ovarian syndrome? What is the name of diagnostic criteria? Come on, everyone. Chocolate question. And I promise I will give all these chocolates. What is the diagnostic criteria for polycystic ovarian syndrome? Single liner. Rotterdam criteria. How many points in Rotterdam criteria? Three points. Point number one, clinical and Biochemical evidence of increased androgens, menstrual dysfunction like oligomenorrhea or aminorrhea, and ultrasound features. In ultrasound features, we wrote few things. Size of follicles between 2 to 9 mm. Clear? 
ovarian volume at least 10 cc or more than 10 cc and what else features in one ovary are sufficient for diagnosis it is not mandatory that abnormality should be present in both ovaries so this is a tricky question but we know very well if findings are present even in one ovary this is sufficient for diagnosis even if right ovary is normal findings are present only in left ovary this is fulfilling our all points of Rotterdam criteria and out of these three only two have to be present. So this is a classical case of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Let us see why it is not endometriosis beta. In endometriosis what will be the clinical clue? Clinical clue in endometriosis if the answer is endometriosis what would you expect in the question? Endometriosis most common symptom is dysmenorrhea. Then what is the clinical triad of endometriosis? Dysmenorrhea, dysperiunia, infertility. So in the MCQ you will see dysmenorrhea, dysperiunia, infertility and there will be some complications related to endometriosis, some pervaginal finding, some ultrasound finding. Ultrasound finding of endometriosis ovarian cyst with which appearance ground glass appearance nothing is written no symptom of endometriosis given no ultrasound finding given no laparoscopy finding of endometriosis given laparoscopic finding of endometriosis chocolate cyst in ovary tiny lesions you know gunshot powder burn appearance tiny patechia like initially and presence of adhesions nothing is given by the way endometriosis jaldi se what is the most common symptom of endometriosis secondary dysmenorrhea gold standard to diagnose endometriosis histopathology investigation of choice for endometriosis laparoscopy best drug to treat endometriosis continuous GnRH most commonly used drug to treat endometriosis progesterone dekho sara endometriosis revise ho gaya na aise aise question aayenge beta common common question aayenge jyada faltu aflatun sochne ka zarurat nahi hai jo humne padha hai usi mein se aayega bas ye dekhna hai endometri why endometriosis is not answer to this question because nothing no symptom is given no investigation finding related to endometriosis is given so endometriosis is rolled out then androgen secreting ovarian tumor why it is not androgen secreting ovarian tumor. In the topic PCOS we discussed very well. Same findings like hirsutism, oligomenorrhea. They are seen in androgen secreting ovarian tumor also because that tumor is secreting androgens. No. So what will happen? Dadi mosh nikal aegi na beta. There will be mustaches and beard because of androgen. But what we wrote in our notes very clearly, the word sudden onset will be written. If the word sudden onset is written or features are more virilizing. What are more virilizing features? Like clitoromegaly, atrophy of breast, hoarseness of voice, altered masculine body contour. If any of these findings were there in MCQ, then answer would have been androgen secreting ovarian tumor because none of them are given here. Answer is not androgen secreting ovarian tumor. So right now we are thinking PCOS. Why it is not theca lutein cyst beta? Theca lutein cyst you remember we wrote in molar pregnancy, hydrated deform mole, complete mole and partial mole. Theca lutein cysts are cysts of corpus luteum. Theca lutein cysts are cysts of what? Corpus luteum. They are seen when corpus luteum is enlarged. Why theca lutein cysts develop in molar pregnancy? Because pregnant corpus luteum is supported by HCG. And what is the molar pregnancy? Abnormal proliferation of syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast. HCG is secreted by syncytiotrophoblast, another single liner. In this session, whatever we are speaking, each and every word is the MCQ for our 20th January 23 exam. And we are expecting fair number of questions from OpsKine because yesterday only they have released that NMC statistic and they have stressed more on six clinical subjects, medicine and allied 120, surgery and allied 120, OpsKine 120. So OpsKine may form fair number of questions in this exam as well. So theca lutein cysts are cysts of corpus luteum. They develop when corpus luteum is enlarged. Why corpus luteum will be enlarged in pregnancy? Because pregnant corpus luteum is supported by 
एच सी जी ह्यूमन कुरियोनिक गोनाडोट्रोफिन एंड इन मोलर प्रेगनेंसी लेवल्स ऑफ एच सी जी आर वेरी हाई सो दिस इज क्लियर केस ऑफ पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवेरियन सिंड्रोम दिस गर्ल इज नॉट एट ऑल प्रेगनेंट these are the image questions few image questions which may be asked in our exam if this image question is given what is this this is polycystic ovarian syndrome this is ultrasound image of polycystic ovarian syndrome and if by chance ultrasound image is not given this gross ovarian image is given this is also polycystic ovarian syndrome we can see numerous follicles which are displaced towards periphery ranging between 2 to 9 mm in size why they have been displaced towards periphery because of thick stroma in the center you can see this is the thecal hyperplasia this thecal hyperplasia is forming thick stroma in the center which is leading to displacement of all these follicles towards periphery giving it a classical necklace sign or a string of pearl Sign. Fine. So the answer to that question is PCOS. Few important notifications. We are just twenty days behind our exam. Our exam में केवल बीस दिन बचे हैं. Just twenty days left. Please make a small note that check all your ID which you have to carry to examination hall, including your passport. देख लो बेटा रखे कहां पे हैं वेयर हैव यू कैप्ट इट कई बार क्या होता है वी टेक थिंग्स फॉर ग्रांटेड यू नो देख लेंगे रखा है मैंने रख दिया था एक बार चेक कर लो बेटा अपनी आंखों से एक बार दोबारा से देख लो चेक भी जो राइट यही रखा था ना मैंने यही उठा के रख दिया था कि फ्यू मोर कॉपीज जो भी आईडी था उसका वन और टू कॉपी एक्स्ट्रा रखने में कोई हार्म नहीं अपना टाइम वेस्ट नहीं करना किसी को बोल दो जीरोक्स करा के ले आएगा एक्लिमेटाइज अकॉर्डिंग टू एग्जाम डे बेटा नाव बिकॉज I don't want any of you to sleep beyond 5:30 a.m. now. सुबह बेटा साढ़े पांच बजे के बाद मत सोना. Because we have to acclimatize, acclimatize according to exam day. First paper will start at nine o'clock, and you have to enter examination hall. That will be according to the notification. Some students may have to enter exam hall by 7:30. Some eight. Some 8:30. So if you have to enter examination hall, say for example 7:30 a.m. you have to come out of your room then you will get the transport then you will reach the exam center and examination center may be far from your place you know so how can you afford to sleep beyond 5:30 am i know some people have habit of sleeping early some have habit of sleeping late so of course there can be some individual variation but try to sleep for 5 hours 5 and 1/2 hours or 6 hours but try to wake up around 5:30 or 6 am take All tests, as if you are taking your exam, whatever test you are taking, test whatever test, topic-wise test, subject-wise test, mock test, whatever you are taking, take them as if you are taking your exam. Be in the proper dress, wear the shoes, and just sit on the table and chair. Don't just lie on the bed and just sleeping and lying down because in the examination hall you will be sitting on the chair and you will be solving questions, wearing shoes and all. And don't forget to eat almonds, walnuts, fruits. They are very essential. They improve our memory. We have discussed all these things quite often in our classes. Let's move to question number three. A patient with fever and abdominal pain. So, what are the clinical hints in this question? Clinical hint in this question is fever and abdominal pain. A patient is presenting with fever and abdominal pain, and she is presenting to the emergency department. On examination, you note. म्यूकोपुरुलेंट वजाइनल डिस्चार्ज ओके जी फाइन एंड सर्वाइकल मोशन टेंडन सो देर इज द म्यूकोपुरुलेंट वजाइनल डिस्चार्ज अलोंग विद सर्वाइकल मोशन टेंडन यू सस्पेक्ट शी हैज पी आई डी यू सस्पेक्ट शी हैज पी आई डी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू कन्फर्म हर लाइकली डायग्नोसिस सी बेटा This is almost a single liner question. Examiner could have clearly asked us what is the gold standard to diagnose PID. Unnecessarily, examiner has cooked the story. But we are in the habit of reading all the questions and options till last word. So the final line, the last line, the bottom line is asking gold standard diagnosis for PID. And we all know what is the gold standard diagnosis for PID. Everyone, can you please tell me? Can you please tell me what is it? Rampal. Very good. Laparoscopy. Chocolate for you, Rampal. 
करिश्मा यस करिश्मा चॉकलेट फॉर यू शुभम चॉकलेट फॉर यू केरला टॉकीज चॉकलेट फॉर यू नबी कुर रहमान चॉकलेट फॉर यू मेडिकल ड्रीम्स चॉकलेट फॉर यू आदित्य यू मिस द चॉकलेट हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी यू से हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड टू डायग्नोज एंडोमेट्रियोसेस हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी इज गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड टू डायग्नोज एडिनोमायोसेस फॉर एंडोमेट्रियोसिस एडिनोमायोसिस हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी फाइन सो दिस इज लेप्रोस्कोपी क्लियर वेरी सिंपल आंसर वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन नाउ histopathology is gold standard for endometriosis and adenomyosis ultrasonography is investigation of choice for fibroid for fibroid what is the gold standard come on chocolate question what is the gold standard for fibroid ultrasonography is investigation of choice for fibroid gold standard for fibroid says gold standard for fibroid says come on come on gold standard for fibroid rapid fire come on everyone Gold standard for fibroid. No, yar, no, 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 no. Gold standard for fibroid is MRI. Gold standard for fibroid MRI. Sumit, you are right. Yes, yes, yes. Gold standard for fibroid MRI. So answer is laparoscopy. These are few important images which may be asked in our exam. This is the image of. laparoscopic image which is seen in chronic pid what are these these are fibrous bands these are adhesions and what is this syndrome called as these adhesions which are seen in laparoscopy in chronic pid this is called violin string sign you can see these strings these are fibrous band as if they are strings of a violin so what is this called violin string sign this is seen in chronic pid this is a ultrasound image or a laparoscopy image first thing beta this is a laparoscopy image what are these these are adhesions fibrous band what is the name of sign violin string sign when is it seen it is seen in chronic pid char char question ho gaye beta fine this is ultrasound image in chronic pid this is ultrasound image in chronic pid we are doing a ultrasound of fallopian tube and we have turned our transducer in transverse section over the fallopian tube because we have turned our transducer over the fallopian tube in a transverse section this fallopian tube is visualized in a circular fashion and what is seen what is this inside fallopian tube this is a fibrous band and what is the name of this sign beta this is called cog wheel sign what is the name of sign cog wheel sign it has appeared as if it is a spoke in a wheel cog wheel sign it is seen in chronic pid this is bead on a string sign this is the beginning of fibrous pen what is this this is hydrocelpings can you see beta this is the tubular structure so this is seen in chronic pid image question chronic pid what is this hydrocelping what is this sign bead on a string sign what is this sign cog wheel sign what is this sign violin string sign this is the laparoscopy sign other ones were ultrasound sign all these are seen in chronic pid fine let's have a quick rapid fire about pid what is the most common complication of pid what is the most common complication of pid a fallopian tube is partially blocked please answer most common complication of pid a fallopian tube is partially blocked come on most common complication of pid if fallopian tube is partially blocked ectopic pregnancy wow wonderful anindita chocolate for you anindita you were discussing numerous queries with me in last few days this chocolate is for you most common complication of pid if tube is completely blocked second question infertility wonderful 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 everyone super super most common complication of pid if tube is completely blocked infertility most common complication of pid if tube is partially blocked ectopic pregnancy most common symptom of pid lower abdominal pain gold standard to diagnose pid laparoscopy clear wow pid ho gaya beta iske baar kuch nahi aayega thoda sa question dekh lena pain milega fever milega kabhi thoda sa tlc increase ho jayega that's all aa gayi 
कभी कभी फाइबरस बैंड दे देगा लेप्रोस्कोपी इमेज वॉयल इन स्ट्रिंग साइन दे देगा अल्ट्रासाउंड में कॉकवील लिख देगा बीड ऑन स्ट्रिंग लिख देगा हाइड्रोसेपिक्स लिख देगा फिर लास्ट लाइन पता है क्या बोलेगा व्हाट इज मोस्ट लाइकली क्रॉनिक पीआईडी व्हाट इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड लेप्रोस्कोपी हो गया कल खत्म व्हाट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ दिस कंडीशन इफ ट्यूब इज पार्शियली ब्लॉक्ड एक्टोपिक व्हाट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ दिस कंडीशन इफ ट्यूब इज कंप्लीटली ब्लॉक्ड इनफर्टिलिटी डन 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 चलो नो सिली मिस्टेक्स एंड अदर वार्निंग नो सिली मिस्टेक If we read all the questions and options till last word, there won't be any silly mistake. Read all questions and options till last word. Read carefully, beta. Whether the question is true, all of the following statements are true, except all of the following statements are false, except or except. Read all these words very, very carefully. Next question. A patient who has been trying to conceive for the past six months. Underwent hysteroselpingography. Okay, beta. She is trying to conceive for past six months. Means she is having some infertility. Underwent SCG. The findings are given below. What is your interpretation? Very, very important. Very, very important image questions for our exam. See, this image is given. This image is given, and examiner is asking she is trying to conceive. So this is not a normal hysteroselpingography image. We know it very well. So we have to identify the last line of the question is what is your interpretation? Examiner has asked us very simple thing. What is most likely? Tell me, my dear children, what is the answer? The options are chocolate question. The options are whether this is a normal hysteroselpingogram, whether this HSG is showing blocked tubes, whether this HSG is showing a bicornuate uterus, whether this HSG is showing a septate uterus. Wow, Lokesh, wonderful! HSG is showing a septate uterus. Saddam, Azu. Zabardat, chocolate for you, Azju. Wonderful, Rampal. Wow, Prince Mina, Naveen, Pushpender, everyone. Zabardat, Shandar, Zabardat, Jindabad. You diagnose septate uterus. Very, very important image question for our exam. In last exam, the question asked was, what is the management for septate uterus? And management for septate uterus is hysteroscopic resection of septum. What is the management for septate uterus? Hysteroscopic resection of septum. Congenital malformations of uterus. Very, very important potential area for our exam. So this is septate uterus. Let's understand various images at the same time because it's not mandatory that only septate uterus will be asked. Some other things may be asked like, you know, what is this image? What is this image? Let's answer. Let everyone. I'm asking you, what is coming to your mind? Come on, everyone. What is this image? Anshul. What is this image? Everyone. Nitesh. Akshay. No, 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 no. What is this image? What is this HSG image? I want the diagnosis. I want diagnosis. What is this HSG image? Didalpit, Prince C, Doctor, Adil, Ranjit, Nani, Zabardas. Come on. Wonderful. This is uterine didalpit. How you can diagnose that this is uterine didalpit? This is one, this is two. And there are how many Leach Vincent cannula? There are two Leach Wilkinson cannula. So just by looking at the number of Leach Wilkinson cannula, two Leach Wilkinson cannula, this is uterine didalphase. Now, what is this image? This is normal HSG image. This is normal HSG image. Radio opaque dye is instilled via this Leach Wilkinson cannula. You can see this is uterus. And these are fallopian tubes on either side. And you can see a spill of dye on either side. Means whatever you instilled in uterus, the dye is traveling all the way via fallopian tubes and entering peritoneal cavity. Means tubes are patent. This is normal uterus. So this is a normal hysterosalpingography image. What is this? Come on, everyone. Rapid fire. What is this? Come on, everyone. What is this image? What is this? Come on, everyone. What is this? Very, very important image question for our exam. What is this? Unicornuate, Gigi, Dr. Ranjit, Nani, Ajit, Anindita, wonderful. Kayan, Manohar, Ajik. Wow, I can't even 
read all the names this is unicoordinate uterus why this is unicoordinate uterus only 50% of uterus is formed everything is absent on opposite side what is the number of fallopian tube in unicoordinate uterus everyone how many fallopian tubes in unicoordinate uterus one one very good two vagina are seen in which congenital malformation of uterus come on single liner question two vagina are seen in which congenital malformation of uterus uterine didal phase one fallopian tube unicoordinate uterus two vagina uterine didal phase come on what is this what is this what is this malformation everyone what is this malformation bicornuate what is this malformation this is bicornuate uterus what is this this question was asked in last exam what is this what is this equipment tell me what is this this is leach wilkinson cannula and via this leach wilkinson cannula we instill radio opaque dye in uterus so i am revising once again this is leach wilkinson cannula it was asked in our last fmg exam they just gave this instrument and the simple question identify the instrument this is leach wilkinson cannula this is bicornuate uterus this is uterine dyed alphabet this is normal histosalpingography image and this is the unicornuate uterus we covered the complete topic nothing beyond this will be asked most common congenital malformation of uterus septate uterus what is the most common complication of congenital malformations of uterus abortion what is the indication for repair of congenital malformation if there is history of recurrent abortion what is the recurrent abortion if there is history of 3 or more than 3 abortion 20 days left for our fmg exam be smartly focused prioritize according to importance in exam prioritize your preparation according to importance in exam you all know what are very very important subjects you can't afford to skip even single thing in those subjects stretch your comfort zone during study hour if feeling sleepy bas itna yaad kar lo yaar hum chale kyon the aur hame pahunchna kya hai humne shuruaat kyon ki thi aur hum jana kahan chahte hain un parents ko dekh lo apne jo airport par aaye the humko chhodne ke liye unke man mein ichcha kya thi wo dekhna chahte hain humko ek bahut bada doctor banna neend bhag jayegi neend aayegi hi nahi next question a 30 year old lady underwent a workup for primary infertility okay on histosalpingography there was a bilateral corneal block okay what is the next step in management so this hsg image is also given in this question and we can easily compare this hsg image with previous hsg images which we just saw you can see radio opaque dye is not able to pass beyond corneal end of uterus the radio opaque dye is filling uterus only but this dye is not able to pass beyond the corneal end if it was a normal histosalpingography image this was a normal hsg when we instilled this radio opaque dye this dye was traveling towards both right and left side was entering fallopian tube and we could see the spill of dye as well that was a normal histosalpingography and in this histosalpingography image we can clearly see that this dye is not able to pass beyond the corneal end so this is the case of bilateral corneal block so she underwent a workup for primary infertility on hsg there was a bilateral corneal block what is the next step in management letrozol can you choose letrozol can you tell me in infertility what is the what is letrozol where is it used letrozol is answer to which question letrozol is answer to which question drug of choice to treat infertility due to pcu due to polycystic ovarian syndrome when there is problem of an ovulation so drug of choice to treat infertility due to polycystic ovarian syndrome letrozol that is related to ovarian disorder not tubal block letrozol is gone hysteroscopic cannulation and laparoscopy what is the most common cause 
of bilateral coronal block. What is the most common cause of bilateral coronal block? Physiological spasm. And if you encounter, if you come across with bilateral coronal block, what is the next step? Hysteroscopic cannulation. We have to pass a guide wire beyond the coronal end to see whether this wire is able to pass beyond coronal end. And if you are able to manage it, then you confirm it with laparoscopy. So the next step is hysteroscopic cannulation and laparoscopy. Intrauterine insemination. What are the indications of IUI? Intrauterine insemination is done if there are anti-sperm antibodies, if there is poor cervical mucus, if there is mild oligospermia, impotence, vaginismus, epispedias, hypospedias, retrograde ejaculation. In all those cases, IUI is done. In vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is answer to the question. Best management for tubal block in vitro fertilizing. But here it is classically written bilateral coronal block on HSG. Whenever we see bilateral coronal block, because we know most common cause of bilateral coronal block is physiological spasm. So first of all, we have to be sure whether this block is due to physiological spasm or due to any pathology. If the question is, most common pathological cause of bilateral coronal block, then answer would be genital TB. Then answer would be genital TB. So answer to this question is hysteroscopic cannulation and laparoscopy. 20 days left for our exam. Forgive yourself for not achieving daily targets if it is. Sometimes what happens beta, <coughs> we, we think that uh, we will achieve this much target by tomorrow evening. Sometimes we are not able to achieve the target. Reasons may be any. Something or other has happened and we could not achieve the target. Don't feel guilty, beta. Don't feel regret. Forgive yourself. Ho gaya. Di beat gai. Raat gai, baat gai, yaar. Agla din a gaya. Agla din ke baat mein socho. Aur agar us din ka target achieve nahi hua, to kya sochna hai? Jo ab tak nahi hua, agar aaj wo hua hai. Many students are sending messages, Sir, we were studying very well. Hamari padhai bhoot achhi chal rahi thi, Sir. We were studying very well and I don't know for last two or three days, sometime I am not able to achieve my target. Pata nahi kya ho gaya, Sir. Padhne baihte, sir mein dard ho jata hai. Padhne baihte, neend aati hai. Agar aisa lag raha hai, to ye socho. Jo ab tak nahi hua, agar aaj wo hua hai, to ab wo hoga, jo aaj tak nahi hua. Ab kya hoga? कल से हम जो आज की कमी रह गई थी उसको भी कवर कर लेंगे आज थोड़ी कमी रह गई थी ना पढ़ने में उसको कल कवर करेंगे जस्ट काम योर माइंड जस्ट काम योर माइंड जस्ट फॉर गिव योर सेल्फ रात कई बात कई हो गया ना अगला दिन आ गया 20 दिन बचे हैं यार इट्स ए 20 डे मैच अपने आप को माफ करते हैं आज लेकिन आज का कल कवर करेंगे ये कब होगा ठंडा रखना है दिमाग को दिमाग को थोड़ा ठंडा रखो जस्ट काम योर माइंड एंड just increase your energy for the next day. Agle din, puri energy ke saan. Puri taakat laga ke, pura cover kar lenge, joh pichle do din mein rahe gaya tha. Aapne ko maaf karte hai. 20 din. He smart khelte hai thoda tha. Chha. Next question. A middle aged woman presented with dysmenorrhea. Middle aged woman presented with dysmenorrhea, dysperionia and infertility. Oh my God, this is the same clinical triad which we were discussing. Three symptoms are given in this question. Dysmenorrhea, dysperionia, infertility. Just by reading these three symptoms, what comes to our mind, this is clinical triad of endometriosis. On examination, you know tender nodularity of the uterosacral ligament. So what is this sign called as? This is called cobble stone field. What is this called? Cobble stone field. You know tender nodularity of the uterosacral ligament. Which of the following complications you don't expect in her? So first of all, we have diagnosed the condition because the clinical triad is of endometriosis, dysmenorrhea, dysperionia, infertility. Out of these three, what is the most common symptom? Dysmenorrhea. And PV finding of endometriosis, cobble stone field due to deposits of the endometrium. This is also given. Now, which of the following complications you don't expect in her? Examiner is not asking you what is the condition. The condition is endometriosis. 
वॉट आर द कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ एंडोमेट्रियोसिस एल एन मास्टर सिंड्रोम ड्यू टू दीज डिपॉजिट इफ देयर इज ब्रेक इन लिगामेंट्स दिस इज एल एन मास्टर सिंड्रोम सो एल एन मास्टर सिंड्रोम इज कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ एंडोमेट्रियोसिस मीनो यूरिया डू यू रिमेंबर वॉट इज मीनो यूरिया डू यू रिमेंबर वॉट इज मीनो यूरिया मीनो यूरिया इज हिमेच यूरिया at the time of menstruation what are the causes of meno urea utrobesical fistula and endometriosis of urinary bladder so meno urea is a complication of endometriosis allen master syndrome is a complication of endometriosis fitz curtis syndrome what is fitz curtis syndrome fibrous bands tough lap between pelvis and liver capsule this is why a patient of pid complains of pain in right hypochondrium so pain in right hypochondrium due to pid this is fitz curtis syndrome so this fitz curtis syndrome is not related to endometriosis allen master syndrome complication of endometriosis meno urea complication of endometriosis ground glass ultrasound appearance of ovarian cysts is seen in endometriosis so answer to this question is fitz curtis syndrome let's quickly revise these images what is this image important image question for our exam this is ultrasound appearance of endometriotic cyst what is the name of this appearance ground glass appearance this is ground glass appearance ultrasound appearance of endometriotic cyst this is chocolate cyst this is laparoscopic finding of endometriosis so laparoscopy finding of endometriosis chocolate cyst ultrasound finding of endometriosis ground glass appearance this is the image of allen master syndrome you can see there is break in the ligament here this is the edges of ligament these are the edges of ligament and this ligament is broken due to fall of endometriotic deposits and this is called allen master syndrome three important image questions for our exam now let's move to next question another important notification or advice whatever you may consider we have started hearing something about covid 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 the mutation has occurred we have seven and all mutation has occurred whatever it is yaar it's not our cup of tea jo hua ho gaya na चाइना में हो रहा है यहां हो रहा है वहां हो रहा है सिमिलरली एनएमसी ने कल एक गाइडलाइन दे दिया दे दिया ना 20 जनवरी से पहले नेक्स्ट हो रहा है क्या 20 जनवरी से पहले नेक्स्ट एग्जाम हो जाएगा क्या वाई वी आर वरीड यार मैनी मैसेजेस आई कुड नॉट इवन रिप्लाई ऑल द मैसेजेस सर क्या होगा नेक्स्ट अरे भैया बीस जनवरी को एफ होगा दिवाली कब मनाते हैं जब रामचंद्र जी रावण को मार के अयोध्या आ गए थे हनुमान जी पहुंचे थे पहले तो मुद्रिका दी थी फिर अंगत पहुंचे फिर बाली पहुंचे फिर युद्ध हुआ लड़ाई हुई कुंभकर्ण मरा मेघनाथ मरा रावण मरा मरने के बाद भी दिवाली नहीं है वो तो दशहरा ही था जब रामचंद्र जी रावण को मार के अयोध्या आ गए तब दिवाली बनी अभी दिवाली दूर है एनएमसी का एक शब्द मत पढ़ना एनएमसी गाइडलाइन का बीस जनवरी से पहले अगर पढ़ते हो और कोई पढ़ाता है तो तुम्हारा टाइम खराब कर रहा है नोट देम दे आर योर एनिमीज सो जस्ट अवॉइड अननेसेसरी आउटिंग्स एंड कॉन्टेक्ट टेक ऑल प्रैक्टिकल प्रिकॉशन अ पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड विद फाइन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड विद इंटरमेस्ट्रल ब्लीडिंग for the past 6 months intermenstrual bleeding means bleeding in between the menses which of the following is least likely with this type of fibroid so examiner has said that she is having intermenstrual bleeding bleeding between the menses and this is due to fibroid what cannot happen with this type of fibroid what else which of the following is least likely with this type of fiber what cannot happen with this fibroid so first of all let's recollect which fibroid may cause intermenstrual bleeding intermenstrual bleeding means metrorrhagia intermenstrual bleeding can happen due to submucous fibroid so submucous fibroid causes menorrhagia also this is figo classification of fibroid you know figo classification so these are submucous fibroid 0 1 2 these are submucous fibroid according to figo classification what is type 
completely in uterine cavity. What is type 1? More than 50% in uterine cavity. What is type 2? Less than 50% in uterine cavity. So, submucous fibroids will cause metroregia, intermenstrual bleeding. They will cause menorrhagia. They will cause abortion. They will cause infertility. So, let's have a quick look at the question. Yes, menorrhagia will occur. Infertility will occur. Abortion will occur. Pressure symptoms will not occur. Pressure symptoms will be due to which fibroid? Subserous fibroid. 5, 6, 7. These are subserous fibroid. They will cause pressure symptoms. You know, beta, because they are protruding outside serosa. They are protruding out of uterine wall. So they will press adjoining organ. So pressure symptoms are caused by which fibroid? Subserous fibroid. According to physical classification, what are subserous fibroid? Five, six, seven. According to FIGO classification, what are submucous fibroid? 0, 1, 2. And we know very well, type 0, 1, 2 are very important for our exam. I will revise once again. Type 0, completely in uterine cavity. Type 1, more than 50% in uterine cavity. Type 2, less than 50% in uterine cavity. But mere pyare bacho, galti nahi karna. Don't commit the silly mistake. I said type 1, more than 50% in uterine cavity. But examiner may ask, how much it is in myometrium? If type 1 is more than 50% in uterine cavity, of course, how much it is in uterine myometrium? Less than 50%. Whatever we are discussing here, that is in reference to uterine cavity. So be very clear what examiner is asking. Clear? Similarly, you know, in polycystic ovarian syndrome, E strong increases, E1 increases. So E1, E2 ratio in PCOS is 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1. If the question is E2, E1 ratio, then it will become 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 3. So please read the questions very carefully what examiner is asking. So answer to this question is pressure symptom. This is another important image question. Sometimes this image is given. This is a hysterectomy specimen. Identify this hysterectomy specimen. These are multiple laddus, multiple laddus. So this is a hysterectomy specimen of multiple uterine fibroid. Sometimes this image may be given. What is this? So this is the red degeneration of fibroid. This is red degeneration in fibroid. This is again an important image question which is asked in fibroid. What is this? This is Boney's myoma screw. What is this? Boney's myoma screw. It is used to hold the fibroid during myomectomy. All these are important image questions. What is this? This X-ray image is given and identify this X-ray image. So what is this X-ray image? This is deposition of calcium carbonate in fibroid. Deposition of calcium carbonate in fibroid is also called calcareous degeneration of fibroid. Another name of calcareous degeneration is womb stone. Another name is womb stone. So this is womb stone or calcareous degeneration in fibroid. This is Boney's myoma clamp. What is the purpose of Boney's myoma clamp? Purpose of Boney's myoma clamp is to release blood supply intermittently during myomectomy. Purpose of Boney's myoma screw is to hold the fibroid during myomectomy. This image, no one will commit a silly mistake. This is red degeneration of fibroid. What is this? This is a hysterectomy specimen of multiple fibroid. What is this image? Figo classification of fibroid. Type 0, 1, 2 are very important. Aaj ki mehnat kal ek pehchan dekhi. 20 days. हिम्मत मत हारना बेटा इन 20 दिन वो कर दो जो पिछले 20 साल में नहीं किया जो पिछले 20 साल में नहीं किया अगले 20 दिन में वो कर दो हर वो रात जो जाग कर बिताई है कल इनाम देगी आज की मेहनत कल एक पहचान देगी हर वो रात जो जाग कर बिताई है कल इनाम देगी इन 20 दिन 20 डे पिछले 20 साल में जो नहीं हुआ अगले 20 दिन में वो होगा पिछले 20 साल में जो नहीं हुआ अगले 20 दिन में वो होगा आग लगा देंगे पानी में ऐसे पास होंगे ऐसे बिल्कुल ऐसे 20 डेज 20 दिन बहुत है 
हर एक एक घंटे का इवेल्यूशन करना है एक एक घंटे का टारगेट बनाओ दो दो घंटे का टारगेट बनाओ दो घंटे ये पढ़ेंगे अचीव किया कम ऑन पांच मिनट का ब्रेक अगले दो घंटे क्या पढ़ना है चंग डाउन गोल छोटा छोटा गोल छोटा छोटा गोल पता एक घंटे का टारगेट बनाते हैं अचीव करते हैं खुश हो जाते हैं एनर्जी बढ़ती है सेल्फ एस्टीम बढ़ती है अगले एक घंटे में और बेटर पढ़ लेते हैं छोटा छोटा टारगेट बनाओ बेटा एक दिन में एवरेस्ट पे नहीं चढ़ेंगे नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ फोर्टी एट ईयर ओल्ड फोर्टी एट ईयर ओल्ड मल्टीपेरस लेडी प्रेजेंट विथ थर्ड डिग्री यूट्राइन प्रोलैप्स विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द बेस्ट मैनेजमेंट फॉर तो दिस इज अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन यूट्राइन प्रोलैप्स best management for her the age given is 48 and she is a multi parous lady management of prolapse depends on parity what is the management of prolapse let's quickly refresh if she is nulli parous abdominal sling operation if she is multi parous vaginal hysterectomy if multi parous but unwilling for hysterectomy further gill or manchester operation if hysterectomy has been done and vault prolapse occur sacral colpopathy or sacrospinous fixation if her age is around 60 to 65 year leave fort colpoclesis and daniel suturing daniel stitching when ring pessary is are used in young women who is unwilling for surgery or in any contraindication for surgery where else ring pessary is used in pregnancy it is used in puerperium and for any temporary relief in prolapse for any temporary relief in prolapse ring pessary is used how we prevent prolapse prevention of prolapses by kegel exercise answer is hysterectomy wonderful sanjana nulli parous abdominal sling bhumika yes b sanya nulli parous abdominal sling naman b anindita b kiran temporary ring pessary fun so this is ward mayo vaginal hysterectomy sometimes you can get this image question what identify this image what is this image this is image of uterine prolapse you can see this is the uterus which is coming out of vulva it is coming out of vulva introitus so this image is of uterine prolapse this image may be asked what are these these are ring pessary where ring pessaries are put ring pessaries are put at the level of ischial spine they are changed every 3 months they are changed every 3 months where are they put they are put at the level of ischial spine what are the indications of ring pessary any young girl who is unwilling for surgery or there are any contraindications for surgery in her in pregnancy in puerperium or for any temporary relief of prolapse ring pessary are used अगर वो पाना चाहते हो जो सबको नहीं मिलता तो वो करना पड़ेगा जो सबसे नहीं होता बड़ी सिंपल सी बात है ना 20 दिन 20 डेज अगर वो पाना चाहते हो जो सबको नहीं मिलता तो वो करना भी पड़ेगा ना बेटा जो सबसे नहीं होता सबको तो पढ़ने बैठते हैं नींद आने लगती है हमको नहीं आएगी अगले बीस दिन जैसे ही नींद आएगी बीस दिन क्यों शुरू किया था और पहुंचना कहां Why we started this journey and where we want to reach? ऐसा करेंगे बीस दिन में जो किसी ने नहीं किया होगा तभी हमको मिलेगा जो सबको नहीं मिलता थोड़ा सा जोर लगाना है बस Which of the following methods is most commonly used for the treatment of CIN आई एन थ्री मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ सी आई एन थ्री कार्सिनोमा इन सी टू थ्री वॉट इज द मैनेजमेंट फॉर सी आई एन टू एंड थ्री लेट्स क्विकली रिवाइज मैनेजमेंट ऑफ कैंसर सर्वे For CIN one observation for two years, if does not regress or progress, <laughs> cryotherapy. CIN two three large loop excision of transformation zone leap, which is also called loop electrosurgical excision procedure. CIN extending to lateral fornice laser. Recurrent CIN hysterectomy. Very important MCQ zone, beta. Management for CIN two and CIN three leap or LLT that. loop electrosurgical excision procedure or large loop excision of transformation zone don't be trapped by hysterectomy hysterectomy is answer to recurrent cin only then carcinoma in situ and 1a1 young nulli parous conization old multi parous total abdominal hysterectomy 1a2 young nulli parous radical tracheotomy 1a2 vardhan hysterectomy old multi parous 
देन वन बी वन यंग नली पेरस रेडिकल ट्रेकिलेक्टा ओल्ड मल्टीपेरस फ्रॉम वन बी वन वी स्टार्ट रेडिकल हिस्टेक्टा वॉट इज द थम रूल फॉर सर्जरी फॉर सर्वाइकल कैंसर सर्जरी कैन बी डन इन सर्वाइकल कैंसर इज साइज ऑफ सर्वाइकल कैंसर इज लेस देन फोर सेंटीमीटर रेडिकल ट्रेकिलेक्टोमी सर्जरी कैन बी डन इफ साइज इज लेस देन टू सेंटीमीटर तो दिस क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट सी आई एन थ्री आंसर इज स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड लार्ज लूप एक्सीजन ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जो वी डिस्कस वेन वी डू वर्दाइम हिस्टेक्टोमी वेन वी डू रेडिकल हिस्टेक्टोमी वेन वी डू कॉनिडेशन कार्सिनोमा इंसिट्यू और वन ए पॉट नाउ दीज आर फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट इमेज क्वेश्चन दिस इज द ओल्ड पेप्सिसमियर किट दिस इज द ओल्ड पेप्सिसमियर किट इन दिस ओल्ड पेप्सिसमियर किट दिस इज आयर स्पेचुला दिस इज आयर स्पेचुला दिस इज आयर स्पेचुला ओल्ड पेप्सिसमियर किट दिस इज एंडो सर्वाइकल ब्रश so this is the old pepsis smear kit this is the new pepsis smear kit or latest pepsis smear kit in latest pepsis smear kit we use this broom or cyto brush so broom or cyto brush they are used in new pepsis smear kit and management for cin2 and cin3 is leap this is the image of leap loop electrosurgical excision procedure this is how we are doing leap this is the leap electrode with this leap electrode we are cutting and coagulating at the same time how much depth can be destroyed by leap 10 mm depth can be destroyed by leap and this is the image of conization what is this this is conization conization treatment for carcinoma in situ and 1a1 in young nerve para and we remember those three mcqs let's quickly revise those three mcqs those three mcqs are what are those three mcqs if a patient presents with lsil and any lesion is visible what is the next step punch biopsy so this is how we do punch biopsy this is punch biopsy for say if nothing is visible we use the colposcope this is the colposcope if no lesion is visible colposcopic biopsy is done and if nothing is visible even by colposcopy what is the management conization so this is the conization i quickly revise these three mcqs a patient present with lsil some lesion is visible what is the next step punch biopsy nothing is visible colposcopic biopsy with the help of this colposcope what is the color of filter in colposcope color of filter in colposcope is green if nothing is visible even by colposcope what is the next step conization what is conization we cut a cone shaped piece as we can see in this image we cut a cone shaped piece and this cone should include ectocervix endocervix and transformation jo now boss many students bahut sare bacche bolte hain sir wo ye kehta hai sir wo ye kehta hai koi kehte hain tumse nahi hoga what you will do ab next aa raha hai kya tum pass ho paoge saying lot of things that humko aata nahi humko kam aata hai bas is baat ko yaad rakhna आज वक्त की बारी है इसलिए मेरे बच्चे मौन हैं जो नहीं जानते इनको जानकर भी एक दिन वक्त बताएगा ये कौन है जो आज बोल रहे हैं ना तुमको आता नहीं तुमसे नहीं होगा यही वक्त बताएगा कि ये कौन है तो बच्चों बड़ी हिम्मत रखना 20 दिन कीप योर मॉरल वेरी हाई हमने पढ़ा है बहुत अच्छे से हम पास हो जाएंगे जिसने ऑप्सकाइनी नहीं भी पढ़ा इस वीडियो को जरा अच्छे से ढंग से बिना फास्ट फॉरवर्ड किए सुन लेना बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन सॉल्व हो जाएंगे विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट मैनेजमेंट फॉर ए 52 टू ईयर ओल्ड लेडी विच सिंपल हाइपर प्लेजिया ऑफ एंडोमेट्रिया सो एज इज 52 टू ईयर्स सिंपल हाइपर प्लेजिया ऑफ द एंडोमेट्रियम विथ प्रेजेंस ऑफ ए टिपिकल सेल her age is 52 the finding is simple hyperplasia of endometrium with presence of atypical cell what is the management for this condition the question is what is the most appropriate management for this condition so this is hyperplasia let's quickly revise the management of hyperplasia first then we will come to the option we discuss 
that management of endometrial hyperplasia depends on presence or absence of atypical cells. If atypical cells are absent, progesterone, medroxyprogesterone acetate. If atypical cells are present, surgery has to be done. Then what we wrote in our notes? If atypical cells are present, surgery. If atypical cells absent, medroxyprogesterone acetate. If atypical cells present, then we will look at the age. If age is less than 45 years, total abdominal hysterectomy, we will not remove her ovaries. She is a young lady. This ovary will give her estrogen, will maintain femininity. But if she is 45 or 45 plus, we will remove uterus along with both ovaries. So atypical cells present, surgery has to be done. Now age will decide which surgery has to be done. Because age is 45 plus, we will remove her ovaries also. So we will not be trapped with option A, that is total abdominal hysterectomy. If her age was less than 45, then we would have gone for total abdominal hysterectomy. Since her age is 45 plus, we will remove her ovaries also. So correct answer is total abdominal hysterectomy along with bilateral salpingoophorectomy. Medroxyprogesterone acetate would have been the answer if atypical cells were absent. Continuous GnRH is best drug to treat endometriosis. Continuous GnRH is treatment for precocious puberty. It is treatment for precocious menarche. Where did we use pulsatile GnRH? Pulsatile GnRH is treatment for delayed puberty. Pulsatile GnRH is treatment for Kalaman syndrome. Pulsatile GnRH is third line management of infertility due to PCOS, ovulation inducing drug. Fine. Very important notification, beta. Badam ka tel. I keep on telling in the classes that we have to eat almonds. We have to eat almonds. Humko badam khana hai. Humko akrot khana hai. Okay. One student sent me a message that gave me idea to make this slide. One student said, Sir, I am applying almond oil. I am using almond shampoo. I use badam ka shampoo, use karta hon, badam ka tail use karta hon. Beta badam ka tail use kar rahe ho, badam ka shampoo use kar raha hon. Aur us bande ne ka, sir, badam nahi khata kyunki mujhe gutka khane ki badi purani adat padi hoi hai. Mein gutka nahi chhod pa raha. Tail badam ka laga hoge, shampoo badam ka laga hoge, ped bhi laga lo badam ka ghar mein aur kha rahe ho gutka. Koi matlab hai? बेटा बादाम खाने हैं और अखरोट खाने हैं जो जैसे पढ़ाया है वैसे ही करना है इधर का उधर नहीं कर देना ठीक है पल्सेटाइल जीएनआरएच कैलेमेंट सिंड्रोम का ट्रीटमेंट है पल्सेटाइल जीएनआरएच डिलेट प्यूबर्टी का ट्रीटमेंट है वहां कंटिन्यूस नहीं चलेगा अ 34 ईयर ओल्ड वुमन हर एज इज 34 ईयर प्रेजेंट्स टू द ओपीडी विद कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ ब्लड इन हर यूरिन ओके she informs you that this happens every month. This happens every month for once and stops on its own. Okay, ji. She underwent a caesarean section one year ago. She underwent a caesarean section one year ago and has no history of incontinence. What is the likely diagnosis? What is the likely diagnosis? So a 34-year-old woman she is presenting to the OPD. Complaint is blood in urine. So this is menorrhea. Blood in urine. Why this is menorrhea happening every month once? Only once at the time of menses and it stops on its own. So what are the causes of menorrhea? Endometriosis of urinary bladder and which fistula? Vesico-uterine fistula or utero-vesical fistula? Vesico-vaginal fistula, what would have been written in the question? A lady is presenting with continuous dribbling of urine through vagina and she is not able to go for micturition on her own. Urethrovaginal fistula. A lady is presenting with continuous dribbling of urine through vagina and she is able to go for micturition on her own. Nothing like this is given in question. Urethrovaginal fistula. A lady comes with complaint of dribbling of urine through vagina only at the time of micturition. So this is none of these. This is uterovesical fistula, which is also called vesico-uterine fistula. 
सो मीनो यूरिया हिमेचूरिया एट द टाइम ऑफ मेस्ट्रेशन इज कॉज बाय यूट्रोबाइकल फिस्टोला एंड एंडोमेट्रियोसिस ऑफ ब्लैडर एंड मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ यूट्रोबाइकल फिस्टोला is cesarean section some incident was given in uterus you know this is how this fistula developed between uterus and urinary bladder so cause of mino urea which fistula utrovesical what is the most common cause of utrovesical fistula cesarean section let's solve the image question this question was asked in last to last exam identify the image very simple image this is urinary bladder and this is vagina and there is a abnormal connection between urinary bladder and vagina so what is the name of this condition this is vesico vaginal fistula so we will not commit any mistake identify the image vesico vaginal fistula let's solve four mcqs here in this image this is number 1 can you tell me what is this number 1 this number 1 fistula can you see it is a abnormal connection between uterus and urinary bladder this is uterus and this is urinary bladder so abnormal connection between uterus and urinary bladder this is vesico uterine fistula which is also called utrovesical fistula this fistula can cause presence of blood in urine because this menstrual blood will enter from uterus into urinary bladder and this will happen only once in a month when she is menstruating and hematuria at the time of menses is called menorrhea cause of menorrhea utrovesical fistula what is the most common cause of utrovesical fistula cesarean section identify this number 2 what is this number 2 this number 2 can you see this is the abnormal connection between vagina and urinary bladder vesico vaginal fistula this is vagina and bladder vesico vaginal number 3 between urethra and vagina urethro vaginal fistula number 4 between rectum and vagina recto vaginal fistula these are important image questions we just need to see the basic anatomy where this abnormal connection is present i revise beta number 1 which fistula vesico uterine number 2 which fistula vesico vaginal number 3 which fistula urethro vaginal number 4 which fistula recto vaginal and this image was asked in last to last exam identify the image vesico vaginal fistula because abnormal connection is between bladder and vagina fine so we will not commit any mistake in padh lo beta 20 din 20 days fir bolta hu पढ़ लो बेटा क्योंकि जब जेब में हो पैसे तभी लोग पूछते हैं आप हो कैसे दिस एन एम सी हैज इशूड स्टेटिस्टिक्स जस्ट अडे इफ यू पास द एग्जाम यू नो इफ यू पास द एग्जाम ऑन ट्वेंटी ऑफ जनवरी एन एम सी विल आस्क यू हाउ आर यू स्वीट स्वीट बेबी हाउ आर यू स्वीट बेबी एंड इफ यू डोंट पास दिस एग्जाम एन एम सी विल आस्क यू हु आर यू वी डोंट नो यू i repeat beta if you don't pass the exam not only nmc people will ask who are you if you pass the exam not only nmc everyone will ask how are you you know how and who this alphabets are same o h o w w h o same alphabet jeb mein ho paise how are you जेब में नहीं हो पैसे हु आर यू पढ़ लो बीस दिन दीस ट्वेंटी डेज इंप्रूव योर स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी पास दिस एग्जाम जस्ट पास एंड वी कैन इजिली पास दिस एग्जाम इन ट्वेंटी डेज स्टडीज ऑल्सो नाउ ऑन वार लेकिन पूरा शिद्दत से पढ़ना पड़ेगा चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड लेडी प्रेजेंट इन लेबर रूम हर एज इज थर्टी ईयर अ थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड लेडी presents in labor room with prolonged labor her labor is prolonged she is diagnosed with deep transverse arrest she is diagnosed with deep transverse arrest which type of pelvis is most likely so deep transverse arrest is seen in which pelvis deep transverse arrest is seen in android pelvis deep transverse arrest is seen in which pelvis you know Deep transverse arrest is seen in android pelvis. नहीं charging भी नहीं हो रहे. Deep charging. Deep transverse arrest is seen in which pelvis? Android pelvis. 
we discussed this pelvis. Let's quickly discuss this pelvis. This is the gynecoid pelvis. Who gave the classification of pelvis? Caldwell and Molloy gave classification of pelvis. He gave classification on the basis of shape of inlet. Most common type of pelvis, gynecoid pelvis. This is the gynecoid pelvis. Shape of inlet is round. What is the android pelvis? Anterior half of pelvis is narrow. Therefore, there are prominent ischial spine. What is the anthropoid pelvis? Anterior posterior diameter of pelvis is much more than transverse diameter. What is the platypeloid pelvis? Transverse diameter of pelvis is much more than anterior posterior diameter. Clear to everyone? Deep transverse arrest is commonly seen in which pelvis? Android. What is deep transverse arrest? If occiput is stuck here. After moving from right occipital posterior position, occiput moves 1 by 8 and is stuck here due to prominent ischial spine. And if it is stuck here for more than one hour, despite of good uterine contraction and complete cervical dilatation, this is called deep transverse arrest. So we solved our question, deep transverse arrest is commonly seen in which pelvis? Android pelvis. Next question, beta. What is the management of deep transverse arrest in android pelvis? In android pelvis, only caesarean section because ischial spines are prominent, it can't rotate more than this. If deep transverse arrest in occur in any pelvis other than android pelvis, and if caesarean section is not given in option, then what will you choose? You will choose vacuum or you will choose faucet. Vacuum is preferred beta because due to suction, vacuum promotes auto rotation and it was arrested transversely. So we have to rotate the occiput further. Management of deep transverse arrest in android pelvis, caesarean section. Management of deep transverse arrest in any pelvis other than android. First choice caesarean, if caesarean not an option, vacuum, if vacuum is also not given an option, then faucet. Fine. So, which type of pelvis is most likely? Android pelvis. Android pelvis is most likely. Anthropoid pelvis, what could be the questions related to anthropoid pelvis? Direct occipital posterior position is seen in which pelvis? Anthropoid pelvis. Face to pubis delivery can occur in which pelvis? Anthropoid pelvis. Platypeloid pelvis, transverse diameter much larger. Face, bro, transverse, they are more likely in which pelvis? Platypeloid pelvis. Let's quickly go through these images. Fine. This is the most common variety of pelvis, gynecoid pelvis. Because shape of inlet is round. If this image is given, we will solve. This is gynecoid pelvis. Why this is platypeloid pelvis? Because you can see transverse diameter is much more than anterior posterior diameter. Why this is the android pelvis? Because this anterior half of pelvis is much narrow than posterior half. And this is the reason there are prominent ischial spines in this pelvis. Another important MCQ beta, prominent ischial spines are seen in which pelvis? Android pelvis. And this is the anthropoid pelvis. Why this is the anthropoid pelvis? As you can see, anterior posterior diameter is much larger than transverse diameter. Then other important image questions beta. Identify this pelvis. Can you answer me this question? Can you answer me this question? Just a moment, just a moment. So. Fine. Can you answer me this question? Which type of pelvis is this? You can see one Ella. Very good. Pizza, shake, thunder, prince, doctor to be wonderful. Android pelvis, wonderful. Why this is Nigle's pelvis? Why this is Nigle's pelvis? Because one ala of sacrum is absent. Only one ala of sacrum is present. If this image question is given, this is Nigle's pelvis. Now come on, give me answer to this question. Which type of pelvis is there? 
in this pelvis you can see both ala of sacrum are absent if both ala of sacrum are absent this is with pelvis come on everyone if one ala of sacrum was absent that was nucleus pelvis if both ala of sacrum are absent chocolate question both ala are absent robert pelvis shubham wonderful prince wonderful nanny wonderful fine piyush inam max pinky shake strange sanya nanny gauri wow this is robert's pelvis so i will quickly refresh once again this is robert's pelvis this is nucleus pelvis this is gynecoid pelvis this is platypeloid pelvis this is android pelvis and this is anthropoid pelvis घबराना नहीं बेटा घबराना क्यों नहीं है घबराना क्यों नहीं है वक्त का फेर है लोग कहते हैं ना तुमसे नहीं होगा एक दिन मेरे बच्चे बताएंगे कि वो कौन है छोटी सी बात बता देता हूं जिंदगी का तजुर्बा है शेयर करता हूं वक्त जब आंखें फेर लेता है ना शेर को भी ऐसे ही कुत्ता घेर लेता है शेर बेचारा चुपचाप कटघरे में बदा हुआ खड़ा रह जाता है और कुत्ते शेर के ऊपर भौंक रहे होते हैं तो जब भी कभी लो फील करो ना Whenever you are feeling depressed, बस याद रख लेना ये समय का खेल है क्योंकि समय जब आंखें फेर लेता है शेर को भी ऐसे ही कुत्ता घेर लेता है लोगों का तो वक्त आता है अब उनका जमाना आएगा 20 दिन केवल पूरी शिद्दत से पढ़ाई में लगा दो ऐसा जमाना लेकर आएंगे ऐसा जमाना लेकर आएंगे देखने वाले देखते रह जाएंगे जब अपना वक्त आएगा कि ये कौन है हमारा वक्त जवाब देगा हमें केवल 20 दिन पढ़ना है जस्ट स्टेप चलो जी अ 32 टू ईयर ओल्ड लेडी 32 टू ईयर ओल्ड लेडी हर एज इज 32 टू शी इज प्रेजेंटिंग एट 34 फोर वीक्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी विथ कंप्लेन्ट ऑफ ब्लीडिंग पर बजायना फाइन 34 फोर वीक्स प्रेगनेंसी ब्लीडिंग पी आर इसी ब्लीडिंग पर बजाय कलर डॉपलर अल्ट्रासाउंड रिवील विलामेंटस इंसर्शन ऑफ अंबिलाइकल कॉड देर फोर सिंगर्स एल्कली डीनेचुरेशन टेस्ट वॉज टन वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दिस टेस्ट तो शी इज ए थर्टी टू ईयर ओल्ड लेडी हु इज प्रेजेंटिंग एट थर्टी फोर वीक्स प्रेगनेंसी एट द कंप्लेन्ट्स आर ब्लीडिंग पर बजाय कलर डॉपलर अल्ट्रासाउंड वॉज टन एंड विच कन्फर्म इंसर्शन ऑफ कॉर्ड सिंगल सेल्कल डीनेचुरेशन टेस्ट फर्स्ट टाइम वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दिस टेस्ट चॉकलेट क्वेश्चन वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दिस टेस्ट पर्पज ऑफ दिस टेस्ट दो आर आंसरिंग सी दे आर क्लीन बोल्ड इन दिस क्वेश्चन सी इज नॉट द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन डायग्नोसिस ऑफ वासा प्रेविया इज डन बाई कलर डॉपलर purpose of singers alkali denaturation test is to differentiate whether the blood which is coming out of vagina is fetal in origin or maternal in origin so singers alkali denaturation test does not diagnose placenta sex centuriata it can be diagnosed by ultrasound it cannot diagnose circumvallate it can be done by ultrasound vasa previa is best diagnosed by color doppler ultrasound purpose of this test is to diagnose fetal blood in vaginal bleeding every word from this test has been asked multiple times in various exam let's quickly revise those mcq what is the reagent used in singer alkali denaturation test 10% qh so uh, alkali is used beta what is the purpose of using alkali what is the principle fetal hemoglobin is resistant to alkali so tell me if you add 10% qh if you add alkali to this blood if fetal blood is present will it be denatured or not denatured fetal blood denatured or not denatured not denatured what is the management for vasa previa cesarean section clear let's quickly go through this image this is the image of filamentous insertion of umbilical cord this is filamentous insertion of cord you can see this is the umbilical cord umbilical cord first enters fetal membrane amnion and chorion traversing through these membrane and then reaching placenta so this is filamentous insertion of cord now this is a bilobed or bipartite placenta where two equal size lobes they are connected by blood vessel 
दिस इज सरकम मार्जिनेट वेयर मैटरनल सर्फेस इज कवरिंग फीटल सर्फेस एंड इट इज कंटिन्यूइंग स्मूथली विथ फीटल सर्फेस This is filamentous insertion of cord, where cord is first inserted on amnion chorion, then it is traversing through these membranes and finally reaching placenta. This is circumvallate placenta. Again, maternal surface is more than fetal surface, but a valve-like thickening is present at the junction. This is the succinctuate lobe, where one lobe is smaller than the other one. This is the accessory lobe, which is a smaller lobe. and these two lobes they are connected by blood vessel if there is no vascular connection we will call it placenta sporia fine this is vasa previa this is ultrasound image of vasa previa where we can see the blood vessels they are inserting lower down can you tell me this is which surface of placenta whether this is maternal surface of placenta or fetal surface of placenta what is the clue here you can see these are multiple what are these can you tell me chocolate question what are these what are these multiple this is which surface of placenta and what are these here on this surface of placenta what are these what are these these are cotyledons these are cotyledons so this is which surface of placenta this is maternal surface of placenta what is the color of maternal surface of placenta dull red color of maternal surface of placenta is dull red these are multiple cotyledons because of these cotyledons this is maternal surface of placenta log aisa kehte hain waisa kehte hain aisa lagta hai waqt ki maar se guzar rahe hain kisi waqt ki maar se nahi guzar rahe beta hum nikhar rahe hain hum koile se heera ban rahe hain so don't worry next question a lady at 32 weeks of gestation she is presenting at 32 weeks of gestation 32 weeks of pregnancy presents in your hospital with complaints of mild respiratory discomfort on examination uterus corresponds to 36 weeks of gestation so she is presenting us at 32 weeks of pregnancy her pregnancy is 32 weeks uterus is corresponding to 36 weeks of pregnancy ultrasound shows fundo posterior placenta and afi to be 30 cm amniotic fluid index 30 cm normal afi is 5 to 25 cm so this amniotic fluid index afi is increased so this is the case of polyhydramnios and because of polyhydramnios she is having respiratory discomfort which fetal anomaly is most likely to be seen here which fetal anomaly is most likely in other words this is a single liner question examiner is simply asking what is the cause of polyhydramnios here so we have to choose the anomaly which is causing polyhydramnios how we concluded this is polyhydramnios because afi is 30 cm and because of polyhydramnios you know her abdomen her uterus is distended more than period of amenorrhea pregnancy is just 32 weeks why it feels 36 because of excessive amniotic fluid inside so let's go through the causes of polyhydramnios bilateral renal agenesis it will cause oligohydramnios if kidneys are absent what is amniotic fluid urine if kidneys are absent no urine is produced polycystic kidney disease if there is polycystic kidney disease urine will not be produced adequately it will cause oligohydramnios so bilateral renal agenesis oligohydramnios polycystic kidney disease oligohydramnios triploidy is associated with fetal renal defect so triploidy causes oligohydramnios duodenal atresia causes polyhydramnios what are various causes of polyhydramnios esophageal atresia duodenal atresia cleft lip cleft palate annular pancreas intestinal obstruction anencephaly spina bifida aperta multifetal pregnancy rh incompatibility torch infections chorioangioma of placenta all these cause polyhydramnios so we have chosen one duodenal atresia which is given here let's go through few ultrasound images which is the overlap with radiology so in duodenal atresia which sign is seen 
What is the name of this sign? Can you tell me a chocolate question? Good overlap with radio. This is ultrasound image of duodenal atresia. Ultrasound image of duodenal atresia. What is the name of this sign? What is the name of this sign? Can anybody? What is the name of this sign? Is sign ka naam kya hai? Kya naam hai is sign ka? This is called double bubble sign. Very good. And double bubble sign is seen in duodenal atresia. So this is a double bubble sign. This is seen in duodenal atresia. If you are doing a fetal ultrasound, you can see this is the spine. And on either side of the spine, there are kidneys. This is one kidney. This is another kidney. So these kidneys are normally visualized. If kidneys are absent, how would it look like on ultrasound? Look here. If kidneys are absent, bilateral renal agenesis. Can you see? This is the spine. No kidney is seen here. No kidney is seen here. This is ultrasound image of bilateral renal agenesis. And this is ultrasound image of presence of both the kidneys, fetal kidneys of course. And what is this? What is this? Can anyone tell me? Good overlap with radiology. What is this sign? This is abdominal circumference. In this abdominal circumference, this is spine. This is portal sinus. And there is no stomach bubble. Ideally, stomach bubble is present here. If there is no stomach bubble, this is seen in esophageal atresia. Absent stomach bubble is seen in esophageal atresia. Double bubble sign is seen in duodenal atresia. Bilateral renal agenesis will cause oligohydrum neon. And this is how we calculate AFI. This is the calculation of AFI. If this image is given, this is how we calculate AFI. We divide abdomen in four quadrants, A, B, C, and D. And then we have to measure longest pocket of amniotic fluid here. And we have to sum up these four. So amniotic fluid index is A plus B plus C plus D. And normal AFI is 5 to 25. Know your enemies, apne dushmano ko yaad rakhna, jo tumhara vakt kharaab karte hain. Woh tumhare dushman hai. Whosoever, whosoever is spoiling your time, is your enemy. Whatever the reason. Jo sukh mein saath dete hain, unhe rishte kehte hain. Lekin jo dukh mein saath dete hain, unhe farishte kehte hain. In 20 din jo tumhare saath khada hai na, tumhare dukh mein, tumhare sukh mein. जो भी तुम्हारा हाल है इन 20 दिन जो तुमको सपोर्ट कर रहा है वो रिश्ता नहीं फरिश्ता है अ 28 ईयर ओल्ड प्राइमी ग्रेविटा 28 ईयर ओल्ड प्राइमी ग्रेविटा प्रेजेंट्स टू द लेबर रूम एट 39 वीक्स ऑफ गेस्टेशन सो एट 39 वीक्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी ऑन एग्जामिनेशन यू नोटिस फीटल हेड हैज अपीयर्ड एट द वल्वा which of the following is done as a protocol to assist the delivery of head at this point of time? So at this point of time, what is done, you know, what is done to deliver the head? The name of the maneuver is modified red chin maneuver. What we do in modified red chin maneuver, we pull the chin, we pull the chin and we press the occiput. This is called modified red chin maneuver to facilitate the delivery of head. So let's come to the options. Episiotomy. Episiotomy is not mandatory. Episiotomy is not mandatory in cephalic presentation. Lovesit maneuver. Lovesit maneuver is to deliver extended arms in breach. Pinard's maneuver. Pinard's maneuver is to deliver extended legs in breach. So if this is a breach, you know, if this is a breach, fine. If this is a breach, Purpose of Pinard's maneuver, in Pinard's maneuver we praise popliteal fossa and this Pinard's maneuver is done to deliver extended legs in prey. Lovesit's maneuver is to deliver extended arms in prey and burn martial method is to deliver after coming head in prey. But best method to deliver after coming head in breach is Piper's fossa. They are not available in India. So in India, best method to deliver after coming head, burn martial method. Best maneuver to deliver extended arms in breach, love set maneuver. Best maneuver to deliver extended legs in breach, pinard maneuver. Breach is of two type, 
कंप्लीट ब्रीच एंड फ्लैक्स प्री कंप्लीट ब्रीच इज कॉल्ड फ्लैक्स प्री वाई इट इज कॉल्ड कंप्लीट ब्रीच इफ थाई इज फ्लैक्स एंड नी इज फ्लैक् दिस इज कंप्लीट प्री सो इफ इट इज द केस ऑफ कंप्लीट प्रीच वॉट विल बी पर वेजाइनल फाइंडिंग बटक्स जेनाइटेलिया एंड फील्ड देन इनकम्प्लीट ब्रीच इज डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री पार्ट वन इज फ्रेंक ब्रीच और एक्सटेंडेड ब्रीच थाई फ्लैक्स नी एक्सटेंडेड वॉट विल बी पर वेजाइनल फाइंडिंग बटक्स एंड जेनाइटेलिया देन नी ब्रीच थाई एक्सटेंडेड नी फ्लैक्स पी वी फाइंडिंग नी फुटलिंग ब्रीच थाई एक्सटेंडेड knee extended what will be pv finding feet what is the most dangerous variety of breach most dangerous variety of breach is footling breach why footling breach is most dangerous variety of breach because of maximum risk of cord prolapse in footling breach there is maximum risk of cord prolapse because of this space between two lower limb so most dangerous breach is footling breach because of maximum risk of cord prolapse management for footling breach and knee breach is only cesarean section safest breach is frank breach or extended breach so assisted breach delivery can be tried in frank breach and flex breach so answer is richen manner this is how we do rid chain maneuver this is the image of rid chain maneuver with one hand we pull the chain with other hand we press the occiput to facilitate the delivery of head when it is visible at vulva this is mandatory recommended by who at the time of delivery of head these are various positions sometimes these positions are asked in exam identify the position so why this is right occipito posterior beta how to identify you can see this occiput is towards posterior side and right side why this is left occipito posterior you can see this occiput is towards left side and placed posteriorly this is right occipito transverse as you can see here why this is right occipito transverse occiput is towards right side and placed transversely just a moment it is placed transversely and this is left occipito transverse here this is left occipito anterior this is right occipito anterior this is right occipito anterior occiput is towards right side facing anteriorly occiput is towards left side facing anteriorly this is how we can identify various positions these positions are commonly asked in our exam let me show you the positions with the pelvis and gudda as well we saw the ray diagram with this we can see it once again it's fine this is right side this is left side right side placed transversely right occipito transverse this is right occipito anterior this is right occipito posterior this is direct occipito posterior this is direct occipito anterior this is left occipito anterior this is left occipito transverse this is right occipit left occipito posterior most common position left occipito transverse most common position in late labor left occipito anterior then direct occipito anterior change your inside outside will change automatically needless to say apne andar jo chal raha hai na us drashya ko badal lo bahar ka drashya badal jayega andar ke drashya mein badalna kya hai log keh rahe hain tumse nahi hoga hamara waqt batayega नींद आ जाती है पढ़ते हुए केवल एक चीज सोचनी है क्यों चले थे और जाना कहाँ है ये विचार जब अंदर बदल जाएगा बाहर का पूरा स्पेक्ट्रम चेंज हो जाएगा अ 30 ईयर ओल्ड मल्टीग्रेविडा लेडी हर एज इज 30 ईयर 30 ईयर ओल्ड मल्टीग्रेविडा लेडी प्रेजेंटेड टू क्लिनिक एट 36 सिक्स वीक्स ऑफ कैस्टेशन शी वॉज फाउंड टू हैव अ ब्रीच प्रेजेंटेशन क्लिनिकली विच वॉज कन्फर्म्ड ऑन अल्ट्रासोनोग्राम so she is the case of breed which of the following is not an indication for cesarean section in her so in which breed cesarean section is mandatory footling breed cesarean section is mandatory knee breed cesarean section is mandatory we just discussed hyperextended fetus hyperextended fetus means hyperextended head 
and if head is hyper extended in breach this is called star gazer breach what is the star gazer breach star gazer breach if head is hyper extended and head in breach is delivered by flexion if head is hyper extended the only management is cesarean section so a star gazer breach can only be taken out by cesarean section so hyper extended breach knee breach footling breach cesarean section and extended breach which is also called frank breach assisted vaginal delivery can be tried so this is not an indication read the question very carefully it is written not so answer is extended breach be honest to yourself i will give you one example just be honest to yourself because i asked this one question on telegram miss next telegram where i post these questions daily and the question was let me show you the question I asked the question. All of the following may be distractors in exam preparation, except, and the options I gave were excessive non-academic use of social media, smoking, alcohol, etc., baby Shona syndrome, walnuts, almonds, and fruits. Only 66% answered this question correct. I am not able to understand why only 66% answered this question correct. This is a very simple question. Excessive non-academic use of social media. This may be a distractor. Smoking alcohol impair our memory. Baby Shona syndrome impair our memory. Impair everything. System failure. Walnuts, almonds, and fruits they enhance our memory. So be honest to yourself. Whatever you are doing. Next question. Charging me or? A woman with gestational diabetes mellitus. A woman with gestational diabetes mellitus is admitted to the labor room. The delivery of the baby's shoulder is delayed after the delivery of hand. Delivery of shoulder is delayed and it's already 75 seconds. If delivery of shoulder is delayed for more than 60 seconds, this is called shoulder dystocia. What is shoulder dystocia? Time interval. If time interval between delivery of head and shoulder is more than 60 seconds, this is shoulder dystocia. Which of the following maneuver is performed as the first maneuver for her? Which of the following maneuver is performed as the first maneuver for her? If this is the case of shoulder dystocia, McRoberts maneuver. First maneuver is McRoberts maneuver. Bundle pressure is contraindicated in shoulder dystocia. Which pressure is given in shoulder dystocia? Suprapubic pressure. Which pressure is given? Suprapubic pressure. So, suprapubic pressure is given in McRoberts maneuver. Suprapubic pressure is given in burn, Marshall also. Javanelli maneuver, if cork screw maneuver fail. Let's come back to our options. Javanelli maneuver, if wood cork screw fail. If McRoberts fail, we go for wood cork screw. What is Wood's cork screw? Like a cork screw, we rotate shoulders, we rotate this head by 180 degree. And if Wood's cork screw fail, now we don't do Gaskins and all, we move to Javanelli maneuver. The first maneuver is Mac Roberts maneuver. If Mac Roberts fails, Wood's cork screw. If Wood's cork screw fail, then Javanelli maneuver. Few important questions related to this. Most common maternal complication of shoulder dystocia postpartum hemorrhage. Most common neonatal complication of shoulder dystocia, brachial plexus injury. Most common maternal complication of twin pregnancy or multifetal pregnancy, postpartum hemorrhage. Most common neonatal complication of twin pregnancy, prematurity. Drug of choice to treat hirsutism due to PCOS, oral combined pill. Drug of choice to treat infertility due to PCOS, letrozole. Drug of choice to treat primary dysmenorrhea, mephenemic acid. Predominant hormones secreted from corpus luteum, progesterone. Most common symptom of cancer cervix and cancer endometrium, irregular bleeding per vagina. Most common symptom of hydrated deformed mole, irregular bleeding per vagina. If it is complete mole, along with passage of grape like vesicle. Most specific or earliest symptom of cancer cervix, postcoital bleeding. Most specific symptom of cancer endometrium, postmenopausal bleeding. These MCQs are cakewalk MCQs, hot cake MCQs. Most common, most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding, 
big debate between cancer cervix and endometrial atrophy most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding endometrial atrophy i know i know everything M my vote endometrial atrophy if developing country is given then it will be cancer stop it mayus matho mere dost kisi bhi waqt tera naam ban sakta hai agar dil mein ho aag aur irade majboot to akhbar bechne wala bhi kalam ban sakta hai abdul kalam azad bharat ke rashtrapati bane bachpan mein unhone हॉकर का काम किया था न्यूज़पेपर बेचते थे दिल में आग होनी चाहिए इरादा मजबूत होना चाहिए कुछ भी कर सकते हैं मेरे ये बच्चे ही एक दिन बताएंगे कि ये कौन है आज वक्त की बारी है मेरे बच्चे मौन है एक दिन मेरे बच्चों का वक्त ही बताएगा कि ये कौन है पढ़ाए हुए बच्चे पढ़ाए हुए बच्चे असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर बन गए एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर बन गए आज मेडिकल कॉलेज में कौन कहता है हम किसी से कम है अभी देखते जाओ समुद्र में डुबकी लगाने वाले हैं हम तब पता चलेगा मंथन के बाद बाहर आके हम कोयले से कैसा हीरा बन गए नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ 26 सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड प्राइमी क्रेपिटर लेडी डिलीवर्ड अ फुल टर्म बेबी बाय असिस्टेड फॉर्सिप्स डिलीवरी सो शी वाज डिलीवर्ड बाय फॉर्सिप्स ओके जी शी वाज डिलीवर्ड बाय फॉर्सिप्स फाइन ओके Which of the following is not an advantage of this mode of delivery? So, these are forceps applications. This is forceps application. What's happening? What's happening with this forceps application? You need a complete 10 centimeter dilatation of cervix. You can apply forceps in fetal distress. You can apply forceps in prematurity also. You can apply forceps in other presenting part other than vertex also. But the problem is. there are more maternal injuries anesthesia is required head should be rotated forceps cannot be applied in unrotated head but vacuum promotes auto rotation due to suction so these are various differences let's come back which of the following is not an advantage of this mode of delivery what is coming to your mind less fetal injuries of course this is the advantage because forceps are applied on maternal pelvic side wall there are more maternal injuries with forceps less fetal injuries can be used in cases of fetal distress this is the advantage vacuum cannot be used in fetal distress because vacuum takes 6 minutes to attain optimum suction pressure how much is the optimum suction pressure in vacuum 0.8 kg per square centimeter this is why vacuum is not used in fetal distress forceps take a edge over vacuum can be used in preterm just yes, forceps can be used forceps don't promote auto rotation vacuum promote auto rotation this is why vacuum can be applied even in unrotated head but for forceps head rotation is a prerequisite so this is not an advantage i am not prepared completely many students are saying sir complete preparation nahi hui pehle to lagta tha sab yaad ho gaya ab lagta hai kuch kuch bhulne lage hain believe me hum zindagi ke aakhri din tak bhi kabhi pura taiyar nahi honge till the last day of our life we are not completely prepared hamari taiyari nahi hai hum bhulne lage hain yaad kiya tha pehle to yaad rehta tha ab thoda thoda sa wash out hone laga it is just a train of pre programmed thoughts of our monkey mind believe me a lot can happen in 20 days i am not exaggerating agar in 20 din mein if we are auditing every two hour study ki is 2 ghante mein main ye padhunga aur maine agar nahi padha to kyon nahi padha माफ तो कर देना अपने आप को लेकिन अगले दो घंटे में पिछले दो घंटे में अगर कोई कमी रह गई उसका बैकलॉग क्लियर करना है एक एक घंटे का या दो दो घंटे का ऑडिट करते हुए पढ़ेंगे हम अखरोट बदाम खाते हुए पढ़ेंगे हम दूसरों की बातें डिमोटिवेटिंग बातें डिमोरलाइजिंग बातें लो फील कराने वाली बातें अगर हमारे दिमाग में आती है बेटा तो बस ये याद रखना इन सबको जवाब मेरा वक्त देगा और वक्त जब नजर फेर लेता है ना तो कुत्ता भी शेर को घेर लेता है मान के चलना तुम शेर हो अगर कोई गुर्रा रहा है ना तुम्हारे ऊपर भौंक रहा है ना तुम्हारे ऊपर कुत्ते भौंक रहे हैं कुत्तों का कान ही भौंकना है शेर का कान शेर बोलता है कि मैं जंगल का राजा हूं नहीं लोमड़ी सबसे चतुर है फॉक्स इज द मोस्ट क्लब 
लायन क्यों जंगल का राजा है शेर क्यों जंगल का राजा है क्योंकि शेर मानता है मैं जंगल का राजा हूं शेर समझता है कि वो जंगल का राजा है इसलिए शेर जंगल का राजा है तुमको यह मानना पड़ेगा कि इस बीस दिन में हम गेम चेंज कर देंगे अगर थोड़ी सी कमी रह गई है उसको एवरी वन और टू आवर ऑडिटिंग करके हम पूरा कर देंगे और ये जो फालतू के ख्याल आते हैं ना कि मुझसे नहीं होगा मैं भूलने लगा हूं इतना पढ़ा था थोड़ा सा कम याद है ये हमारा ह्यूमन बिहेवियर है बेटा एवरी वन इज हैविंग द सेम बिहेवियर मुझे भी कभी कभी ऐसा ही लगता है लेकिन जल्दी से मैं अपनी इन्हीं स्लाइड्स को देख लेता हूं बेटा जो स्लाइड तुमको दिखा रहा हूं ना वही स्लाइड मैं भी देख लेता हूं जैसे तुम हो वैसा ही मैं भी हूं इन्हीं स्लाइड को देख के फिर मैं भी मोटिवेट हो जाता हूं यार इन स्लाइड को देख के जब मेरे बच्चे वो खेल कर सकते हैं असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर बन सकते हैं एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर बन सकते हैं मेडिकल कॉलेज में तो मैं भी जल्दी से मोटिवेट हो जाता हूं मैं भी जंप करने लगता हूं कम आ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर ओल्ड लेडी हर एज इज ट्वेंटी सेवन presents in your opd with history of amenorrhea for 6 weeks and positive urine pregnancy test so she is having amenorrhea for 6 weeks her urine pregnancy test is positive per vaginal examination reveal empty uterus and adenoxal mass okay ji 6 weeks amenorrhea urine pregnancy test positive means she is pregnant per vaginal examination reveals empty uterus uterus khali hai and there is the adenoxal mass tubo ovarian mass transvaginal ultrasound was done which confirmed clinical finding an ultrasound was done which confirmed yes doctor you are right uterus is really empty and there is a mass in the adenoxa okay the which of the following is the next step in further evaluation protocol for her do you remember we have done ultrasound and in ultrasound empty uterus had an excel mass what was the next step we were doing beta hcg estimation and we were repeating it after 48 hours and there were three mcqs here if beta hcg doubles after 48 hours it is a late developing normal intrauterine pregnancy if beta hcg increase but does not double after 48 hour ectopic pregnancy if beta hcg falls after 48 hour abortion has occurred so what is the next step here estimation of serum beta hcg level when you do immediate emergency laparotomy in ectopic pregnancy immediate emergency laparotomy is done in ectopic pregnancy if it is the case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy so what you want to find in the question either ruptured ectopic return or she is in shock return or she is hemodynamically unstable return or her blood pressure is falling return then we will go for immediate laparotomy life saving surgery because in ectopic pregnancy if it is ruptured there is such a massive bleeding inside as if a tap is open jaise kisi ne nal khola chhod diya laparoscopy is done in ectopic pregnancy if she is hemodynamically stable but surgery is done laparoscopy is done when if size of ectopic mass is more than 4 cm if there is no response to medical management or if heart beat is present in tubo ovarian region so this is also gone we are not here three doses of methotrexate first of all we try with single dose of methotrexate and that too once we are sure that this is ectopic pregnancy and then we have to see whether there is any indication of giving drug what is the indication of medical management size of ectopic less than 4 cm if hcg levels are between 1000 to 5000 international units cardiac activity is absent we have written all these in our notes so what is the next step at this point of time estimation of serum beta hcg level in 20 dino mein mehnat ka deepak aisa jalaya jaye ki mazak banane wale khud mazak ban jaye beta it's a kind request in 20 dino mein chahe kuch karna pade ye 20 din dobara nahi aayenge you will not get these 20 days once again मेहनत का ऐसा दीपक चला दिया जाए कि मजाक बनाने वाले खुद मजाक बन जाए और बेटा कोई भी अगर तुम्हारा टाइम खराब करने की कोशिश करता है ना फॉर वॉट एवर द रीजन किसी को शौक होता है मत 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 अपना टाइम खराब करना 20 जनवरी से पहले कोविड नहीं आएगा 20 जनवरी से पहले नेक्स्ट नहीं आएगा 
प्लीज 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 कंसंट्रेट ऑन एफ एम जी एग्जाम होके रहेगा बीस जनवरी को होके रहेगा बीस जनवरी को कोई एनएमसी गाइडलाइन बीस जनवरी का एफ नहीं रोक पाएगी एक मिनट खराब मत करो अपना फालतू की बातों में अ थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड लेडी अ थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड लेडी प्रेजेंट विद सिक्सटीन वीक्स ऑफ एमिनोरिंग शी इज प्रेजेंटिंग विद सिक्सटीन वीक्स ऑफ एमिनोरिया एंड अ पॉजिटिव यूरिन प्रेग्नेंसी टेस्ट हर यूरिन प्रेग्नेंसी टेस्ट इज पॉजिटिव शी इज कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ ब्लीडिंग पर वजाइनम Along with history of expulsion of products of conception, okay, ji. Abdominal examination reveals fundal height corresponding to twelve. So she is presenting at sixteen weeks of amenorrhea. So her pregnancy duration is how much? Sixteen weeks. But fundal height is corresponding to twelve weeks pregnancy. Means it is less than period of amenorrhea. Fine. Per vaginal examination shows open internal loss. Which of the following is most likely? So she is having bleeding. He has passed pieces also. Which of the following is most likely? Battery low. Her laptop ki bhi hariyo. Battery is running low. Band ho jayega bhi laptop. Charging me to lagao. Anyways, internal loss is open. Fundal height is less than period of amenorrhea. What is likely? She has passed pieces. She is having bleeding per vagina. Missed abortion. In missed abortion, will she give history of bleeding per vagina? No. No history of bleeding per vagina. They mostly remain asymptomatic. This is why this is called missed abortion. Identity form mold. What will you find in the question? Irregular bleeding per vagina with passage of grape-like vesicle. That is high dated deform mole. And fundal height will be more than period of amenorrhea. In fact, not less than period of amenorrhea. If it is the case of inevitable abortion, why it is not inevitable abortion? Inevitable abortion. You will not see this line in the question. History of expulsion of products of conception. history of expulsion of products of conception is seen if it is incomplete abortion inevitable abortion and incomplete abortion they are distinguished by this line only history of expulsion of products of conception is absent in inevitable abortion otherwise period of amenorrhea fundal height may be less than period of amenorrhea in both of them internal loss is open in both of them Missed abortion, no history of bleeding, internal loss is closed. So this is a clear case of incomplete abortion. Let's quickly go through few images. Let's play. Thoda sa rapid fire khelte hain. Chocolate question. What is this abortion? What is this abortion? Please answer. These are the chocolates and these are due. We will meet and I will give you your chocolate. I know you don't need chocolate. You are not answering because of chocolate. It is just a token of love and affection from my side. If you get this image, where the gestational sac is empty and no embryonal echo is seen, what is this? This is blighted ovum. What is this called as? Blighted ovum. Another name of blighted ovum is an embryonic pregnancy. There is no embryo, only gestational sac. An embryonic pregnancy. Americans say it an embryonic pregnancy. British say is blighted ovum. Very easy to remember, beta. Britain B blighted ovum B. So Britain wale kya bolte hain? Isko blighted ovum. America A an embryonic pregnancy A. America wale kya bolte hain? Isko an embryonic pregnancy. Chalo. Dusra image question. If this kind of image is given, where you see a flat line in cardiac tracing. and the embryonal echo is seen this is missed abortion when you say it is missed abortion if crown rump length is 7 mm or more than 7 mm and no cardiac activity is seen when you say it is a blighted ovum if mean sac diameter is 25 mm or more than 25 mm and still it is empty this is blighted ovum or an embryonic pregnancy This is how we see a normal cardiac activity. You can see this 
ultrasound beam this is passing through this fetal heart and you can see these are various cardiac pulsation in the form of a waveform so this is a live fetus this is a alive fetus you can see the cardiac activity and this is the case of missed abortion where you see a flat line you don't see the cardiac tracing like that and that was the case of blighted ovum empty sac without any embryo these image questions are also frequently asked identify this syringe so this is a menstrual regulation syringe there is only one knob if there is only one knob in the syringe this is menstrual regulation syringe if there are two knobs in the syringe this is a manual vacuum aspiration syringe so how do we identify whether this is a menstrual regulation syringe or a manual vacuum aspiration syringe two knobs in unwear syringe one knob in menstrual regulation syringe all these questions are important image questions for our exam take moments of short rest between 10 deep breath agar baat nahi ban rahi na beta agar lagta hai problem ho rahi hai we are facing some problem thodi si baat kam ban rahi humko lagta hai take moments of short rest between 10 breath Gary Gary Saslo, take one breath and just take moment of rest like this. Just take deep breathing, take moment of rest, take moment of rest, just calm your mind, just relax your mind. Beast in me, dunya jitni hamko, aag laga denge beast in ke handar hum. To kaise lagaoge beast in ke handar aag? Beast in ke handar aag lagane ke liye calm rehna padega. Take a deep breath, just relax. Deep breath, just relax. And then next two hours, leave dark. I will accomplish these things in next two hours. Agle do ghante mein ye padunga, usko celebrate karunga, ek akhrot khaunga, ek badam khaunga, usko celebrate karunga, fir agle do ghante ka target banaunga, shant raunga. Agar do ghante mein wo target achieve nahi hua, I will forgive myself. Mein apne aapko maaf karunga, lekin, jo mujhe ulta sida bol raha hai, usko bol dunga. उसको बता दूंगा अपने मन ही मन में आज बोलूंगा नहीं जब वक्त वो फेर लेता है तो शेर को भी कुत्ता फेर लेता है और मेरा वक्त बताएगा कि मैं कौन हूं आज वक्त की बारी है इसीलिए मैं मौन हूं कॉट इट हिम्मत नहीं हार हिम्मत क्यों हार जस्ट कीप काम यू विल फील रिलैक्स फ्रॉम स्ट्रेस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज फॉल्स Medical abortion is the most common method of abortion in first trimester. Correct statement. Suction pressure in suction evacuation is 600 millimeter of mercury. Correct statement. Artificial rupture of membranes is surgical method of choice for induction of labor or for augmentation of labor. Artificial rupture of membranes is for augmentation of labor. Management for obstructed labor is immediate cesarean section. This is the correct statement. And our question is, which of the following statement is false? So artificial rupture of membrane is done for augmentation of labor. It is not done for induction of labor. If you do artificial rupture of membrane for induction of labor, if you rupture membrane, labor has not yet begun. Fetus is high up, so umbilical cord will come down. There is risk of cord prolapse. What is the risk? If you do artificial rupture of membrane for induction of labor, because fetus is high up, beta, labor has not yet begun. And if you are doing ARM, there is risk of cord prolapse. What is cord prolapse? If umbilical cord comes below presenting part, this is cord polar. This is why artificial rupture of membrane is done for augmentation of labor and not for induction of labor. Artificial rupture of membrane is done with the forcep. What is the name of this forcep? Cocker's forcep. ARM is done with which forcep? Cocker's forcep. In Cocker's forcep, there are two that either hand. So we do ARM with this forcep. So surgical method for augmentation of labor, artificial rupture of membrane. Drug of choice for augmentation of labor, oxytocin. Surgical method for induction of labor is stripping of membrane. 
This is the surgical method of choice for induction of labor. This is called stripping of membrane. Digital separation of membrane. With our fingers, we are separating amnion and chorion from uterine wall, which causes release of prostaglandins PGE2, which initiate uterine contractility. What is the drug of choice for induction of labor? Prostaglandin PGE2. Dinoproston gel. What is surgical method of choice for induction of labor? Stripping of membrane. Stripping means digital separation of membrane from uterine wall. This is also called which reflex beta? This is also called Ferguson reflex. What is another name of this reflex? Ferguson reflex. Don't change answers frequently beta. Another important advice to you, don't change answers very frequently. First, inner voice is correct. Jo pehli baar mein dimaag mein aajati hai na baat, that is correct. Most of the time. And if you are stuck, if you are stuck, just close your eyes. Agar samaj nahi aara, you are stuck between the two options. Just close your eyes and recall when this topic was taught. Just recall when this topic was taught. Yes! It is that simple answer only. Jada complicate mat karna apni life ko. Don't complicate it much. Ye voice simple answer hai. Jo hamare dimaag mein aaya tha. Examiner koi bhot faltu ki cheez nahi fek ra. Googly fek ta hai, wo googly hume dur se samaj mein aajati hai. It is that simple answer only. Apni aakho ko band karke, ek baar recall karna. Kya pada tha? Kab pada tha? Ye kya tha? Or re ya! Ye to voice simple answer hai. This is that simple answer only. Only fine. Next question. Question number 22. A 32 year old multi -gravida. Her age is 32 year. Presents in your hospital at 30 weeks gestational age. She is presenting at 30 weeks gestational age with history of painless bright red bleeding per vagina. So she is presenting at 30 weeks of pregnancy. The complaint is painless, bright red bleeding per vagina. And she had this bleeding in the morning, which is stopped on its own five hours before. Five hours before this bleeding was closed. So she had this bleeding in the morning, five hours before this bleeding was she said she had this type of bleeding seven days back also. Such bleeding was seven days before this bleeding. On clinical examination, her blood pressure is 118 by 76, pulse rate is 78. Uska BP bhi normal hai, uski pulse bhi normal hai. Which of the following is the next step in evaluation protocol for her condition? So first of all, examiner is not asking what is likely. Examiner assume that you have already diagnosed the condition. So what have you diagnosed, mere pyare bacho? What have you diagnosed by now? She is having painless bleeding, bright red bleeding, painless bleeding, bright red bleeding, painless, bright red, recurrent bleeding. She had it seven days back also. So this is a case of placenta previa. Now what has to be done? What is the next step in evaluation? Placenta previa, first of all, we need to identify which placenta previa is this, whether we can plan a normal vaginal delivery, whether we can go for a cesarean section, or whether we have to take this baby out immediately, or we have to wait for some time. Why immediate cesarean section is not the answer, because her vitals are stable. Whatever bleeding has occurred, it is in proportion to her general condition. Her BP is normal, her pulse is normal. BP is not falling, there is no tachycardia. Means her GC is okay. She is hemodynamically stable. This is why we are not in hurry to take the baby out right now. We can wait better. Tocolytics. Tocolytics are given in cases of placenta previa if uterine contractions are present. Because placenta previa itself is a risk factor for preterm labor. But nowhere in this clinical question it is mentioned that uterine contractions are present. So there is no role of tocolytic. Injection corticosteroid for fetal lung maturity. Injection corticosteroids can be given. But the question is what is the next step? First of all we want to know 
which type of placenta previa is there, whether it is just a low lying one or a placenta previa. So answer is transvaginal sonography. First of all, let's be sure which type of previa is this. This is the normal placenta. This is the ultrasound is investigation of choice. Ultrasound is gold standard for diagnosis of placenta previa. Let's understand these images. This is ultrasound image of placenta. This is placenta here and lower edge of placenta is finishing right here. And this is the level of internal os. This is the level of internal os. And this is the distance between internal os and lower edge of placenta. And the thumb rule is, if this is either 2 cm or more than 2 cm, this is not a case of placenta previa. So this is a normally located posterior placenta. Let's compare it with the next image. This is the image of placenta previa. This is the placenta, lower edge of placenta, and you can see the lower edge of placenta is reaching up to the level of internal os. It is reaching up to the level of internal os. So this is the posterior placenta previa. Let's compare it with another image. This is the image of anterior placenta previa. Placenta lower edge is reaching up to internal os. So this is anterior placenta previa, this is posterior placenta previa and this is a posterior normally located placenta. So this is why we want to do transvaginal ultrasonography to diagnose the type of placenta previa. Compare your today with your yesterday, keep calm and stable. Don't compare with others, sir, he scored uh, 180 marks in mock, he scored 170 marks in mock, he scored 210 marks in mock, I scored 120 marks in mock, I scored 80 marks in mock. Compare your today with your yesterday and keep calm and stable. Shant baitna bhi ek art hai beta. Just keep calm and stable. Maine kal itna padha tha, mujhe aaj itna padna hai. Compare your yesterday with your today only. Don't compare yourself with others. Let's move to the next question. A 30-year-old multigravida lady. She is a 30-year-old multigravida lady. She presents to the labor room with lower abdominal pain. And she is presenting at 30 weeks of pregnancy. Abdominal examination revealed fundal height of 32 weeks. Fundal height of 32 weeks gestation. Abdomen is hard and tender. Uterus is hard and tender. Fetal parts are not palpable. Fetal heart sound are not audible. Fetal parts not palpable. Fetal heart sound not audible. If fetal heart sound not audible, it is not intrauterine fetal death all the time. It can be due to abruptio placenti also because in abruptio placenti also, abdomen and uterus are hard and tender. Why they are hard and tender? Because of placental abruption, there is release of thromboplastin. And this thromboplastin is uterotonic, which increases uterine tone. This is why they become hard and tender. Since abdomen uterus are hard and tender, many a times fetal parts are not palpable. Many a times fetal heart sound are not audible. Which of the following is best management for her? So examiner is not asking what is most likely. Examiner has already assumed that you have already diagnosed the condition. This is a case of abruptio placenti. What is the management for abruptio placenti? Management for abruptio placenti is immediate induction of labor due to risk of disseminated intravascular coagulation. Which mode of delivery is preferred? Vaginal delivery. Already she is in distress, why we want to put her in unnecessary stress of anesthesia? So whether this is abruptio placenti, whether this is pregnancy-induced hypertension, whether this is HELP syndrome, whether this is eclampsia, which mode of delivery is preferred? Vaginal delivery is preferred. So best management for her is immediate induction of labor. We will not do cesarean section. We cannot continue pregnancy till 37 weeks. There is risk of TIC. In this question, if examiner gave you the evidence of DIC, like serum fibrinogen levels are low, D-dimer is very high, or examiner would have written, she has developed DIC. Then if DIC is developed in abruptio placenti, what is the management? Management is 
what is the management if DIC has developed in abruptio placenti? Correct DIC first and then treat abruptio placenti. Then you induce labor. These are various images for abruptio placenti. You can see this placenta. This has been separated from uterine wall. This is uterine wall and this placenta is separated from uterine wall and this is a clot. This is a clot here, retroplacental clot. This is the clot behind placenta and it is seen in abruptio placenti. This is why ultrasound is not conclusive in abruptio placenti. Ultrasound is 100% diagnostic for placenta previa because this picture of abruptio placenti is confused with a retroplacental fibroid. This is why a combination of Clinical correlation and ultrasound means abdomen is hard and tender, uterus is hard and tender, fetal parts are not palpable, fetal heart sound are not audible. Clinical correlation and ultrasound and clinical correlation is superior to ultrasound in diagnosis of abruptio placenti. And these are very two images for abruptio placenti. Most common variety of abruptio placenti, mixed variety. Then we have concealed abruption, we have revealed abruption. Concealed abruption means lower edge of placenta is not separated. So whatever retroplacental blood is there, it is collected inside. While a case of revealed abruption, you can see this blood is coming out. This blood is coming out because lower edge of placenta is also separated. This blood is coming out. And this is the image of covalier uterus. What is this image? Covalier uterus. This covalier uterus is also called uteroplacental apoplexy. It is seen in cases of concealed abruption when retroplacental blood reaches up to outermost layer of uterus that is serosa. Receiving many messages, sir, feeling lot of fear. Finally, beta, what we need, tell me. Finally, we need 150 out of 300 to pass the exam. How many marks we need to pass the exam? 150 out of 300. Just have faith in God. Follow these strategies. We are going to make it. And listen very carefully. Obey to all is well. There is no need to worry. All is well. In the 20th day, we will do a lot of things. Join Miss Next Telegram group for latest recent pattern expected questions. I am posting the questions daily in this Telegram group. If anyone find any difficulty, this is the Miss Academic Telegram group. If anyone find any difficulty, you can telegram me at 704210992. And this is the QR code of Miss Next Telegram group. I am posting questions daily on this telegram group. Various faculties are posting. Especially I am posting at 9 o'clock at night at 9 p.m. They are potential question, important question, expected question for our exam. This is the QR code for the telegram group. It is the Miss Next telegram group. This is the academic telegram group of Miss where I am posting questions daily. And if you find any difficulty, to join this telegram group, even after scanning or going through this QR code, you can telegram me at 7042-10992. Fine. So, we will be connected daily, especially at 9 p.m. via this telegram group. Question number 24. A 26-year-old primary gravida presents in your OPD at 27 weeks of gestation. So she is presenting at 27 weeks. She is presenting at... Comments are not coming. I cannot see. I am not seeing. I am not seeing. I am not seeing any comments. She is presenting in your OPD at 27 weeks of gestation with right upper quadrant pain. With right upper quadrant pain. Diminished vision and scotoma. Okay. Her blood pressure is 180 by 120 millimeter of mercury. So she is hypertensive. Her BP is 180 by 120. Her liver enzyme AST is 120 international unit. LDH is 900 international unit. And platelet counts are 65,000. So what is coming to your mind? What is the most appropriate management for her? So what is this condition? She is a hypertensive lady. 
her liver enzyme raised ldh is high platelets counts are low so this is a clear cut case of help syndrome so this is a clear cut case of what help syndrome what is the management for help syndrome immediate induction of lab labitalol steroids continue pregnancy till 37 no we don't continue pregnancy if we have diagnosed help syndrome we just give prophylactically magnesium sulfate labitalol and immediately we go for induction of labor no point in continuing pregnancy till 37 week start magnesium sulfate therapy and continue pregnancy till 34 If help syndrome is diagnosed, magnesium sulfate, labitalol, and immediate induction of labor, we have clearly written in our note. Thiopentone sodium is treatment for management for status acclimatical. Immediate induction of labor is the treatment. Let's quickly revise what is the management of mild preeclampsia. Mild preeclampsia, no drug treatment is given. We just monitor her blood pressure. and proteinuria and continue pregnancy till 37 so we are continuing pregnancy till 37 weeks if it is mild preeclampsia what is treatment of severe preeclampsia labitalol steroid and continue pregnancy till 34 weeks management for help syndrome magnesium sulfate labitalol and immediate induction of labor management for eclampsia first step maintenance of airway then magnesium sulfate then labitalol and then immediate induction of labor which regime is preferred prichard regime what is the earliest evidence of magnesium sulfate toxicity disappearance of knee jerk knee jerk is grown at 10 milli equivalent per liter what is the therapeutic index of magnesium sulfate 4 to 7 milli equivalent per liter all these questions are super duper important single liner question super duper important single liner question what is the treatment of choice for emergency hypertension in pregnancy iv labitalol if iv labitalol not, not given in option iv hydrolidine what is drug of choice to treat pih labitalol what is drug of choice to prevent and to treat 2 mcq beta drug of choice to prevent eclampsia drug of choice to treat eclampsia magnesium sulfate drug of choice to treat refractory hypertension in pregnancy sodium nitroprusside drug of choice for status acclimatica thiopentone sodium best predictor for pih uterine artery color doppler what is predictor of pih in uterine artery color doppler persistence of diastolic notch even beyond 22 weeks of pregnancy what is the best drug to prevent pih aspirin what is drug of choice to treat preterm labor nifedipine drug of choice to treat preterm labor in heart disease patient atosiban drug of choice to prevent neurological complications in preterm labor magnesium sulfate and magnesium sulfate is given if gestational age is less than 28 week drug of choice to prevent preterm labor progesterone drug of choice to prevent preterm labor progesterone drug of choice to prevent pih aspirin super duper important i'm seeing best drug to treat endometriosis continuous gnri best diagnosis of fibroid mri investigation of choice for fibroid ultrasound investigation of choice for follow up of fibroid serial ultrasonography don't forget these mcq rule of 2 most important aspect in post op management of vesico vaginal fistula continuous catheterization of urinary bladder for 2 weeks no per vaginal exam no per speculum exam no intercourse allowed for 2 months no pregnancy allowed for 2 years last session question if she becomes pregnant how the baby is taken out by which cesarean section classical cesarean section which is also called upper segment cesarean section how much is the risk of scar rupture in classical cesarean section 4 to 9% how much is the risk of scar rupture in lower segment cesarean section 0.2 to 1.5% abhi to bas din nikla hai puri raat baki hai yu hi nahi haar sakta main abhi kamyabi se mulakat baki hai last question a 35 year old lady presents with twin pregnancy so she is presenting with twin pregnancy 
her ultrasonography image is shown here. Which type of twin pregnancy is there? So this is the ultrasound image, super duper important question, super duper important image question. What is this ultrasound sign in twin pregnancy? What is the name? This is twin peak sign. Why this is called twin peak sign? Because we can see this dividing membrane or intertwin membrane become thicker at the insertion site on placenta. So this is a twin peak sign. So this twin peak sign is seen in dichorionic pregnancy. Now you tell me a rapid fire question, another sign. What is this sign? Tell me. In twin pregnancy, what is this sign? This is called T sign. This T sign is seen in monochorionic pregnancy. How this T is formed? This is the placenta here and this is the intertwin membrane. So this is how a T is formed. So T sign is seen in monochorionic pregnancy, while twin peak sign, which is also called lambda sign, is seen in dichorionic pregnancy. So answer to this question is very simple. It is dichorionic diamniotic. Monochorionic which sign is seen? T. And this is the image of monochorionic monoamniotic. This is the image of dichorionic diamniotic. This is the image of monochorionic diamniotic. This is the image of monochorionic monoamniotic. Both the fetuses are present in one amniotic cavity. What is the complication? Their umbilical cord may entangle with each other. So cord entanglement is a complication of monoamniotic pregnancy. And what are these twins? These are Siamese twins or conjoint twins. Most common variety of Siamese twins are parapagus. They are joined laterally. Mere pyare bacho, finally, at last, I tried my level best to sum up few things. Wishing you a very happy, very healthy and very prosperous, happy new year. And if you have any problem, we are connected daily on Miss Next Telegram group. You can join the Telegram group via the QR code which I gave you. Once again, wishing you a very happy new year ahead. Bye-bye. Take care. We are together. We will fight together. We will study together. Or yaad rakhna, wakt jab bura aata hai, sher ko bhi kaun gher leta hai? Kutta. Hum sab kya hai? Sher. Bye-bye. Take care. See you.